They've only ever won twice here at Anfield in their history. They've been 36 times, two wins in the Premier League era, one under Martin Yoll in 2012 and one under Scott Parker. Uh, not so long ago, March 2021, uh, that year that Fulham had three managers, ended up getting relegated, but they did win that game here at Anfield, which I think was the last of the run of six that you were talking about, Stephen. And since then, Liverpool have only lost one league game at Anfield in the last 48. Against Leeds. Against Leeds, good knowledge, yeah. October 2022. So quiz question answered. And Fulham very nearly win an early corner. Matip's header back towards Kelleher was going wide of him. Kelleher's done really well to keep that in play. He looked sharp there. Yeah, he had to be sharp because it would have been, like you say, going up for a corner. Just raced across the goal line to palm it back into the box and make sure that they didn't concede that corner. Liverpool then, all in red, defending the goal in front of the cop away to our right. I'll give you the full team lineups in just a second. Three other games underway in the Premier League, kicking off at two o'clock. Full commentary on Chelsea, Brighton over on Sports Extra. Bournemouth against Villa, West Ham against Palace also underway. Offside flag is up uh, against Dominic Soboslai. And those two games available as commentaries via the BBC Sport website and app. I'm not very good on technical terms on hairstyles, but Darwin Nunez, Stephen, has gone a little bit different today, hasn't he? The, the longer hair is tied back into sort of two straight plaited ponytails so on top of his head it's in a sort of tight centre parting and then you've got the long ponytails behind him that's the best I'm going to be able to do with that uh, Raul Jimenez's lob ball over the top which Wobi chases and Wobi's got quite a bit of space on the left here for Fulham low cross in and Kelleher is able to grab it at the near post Stephen Warner oh, he's unlucky there Alexander Wobi because it was the right idea the pass to the back post wasn't on or the cross into that area so he just tries to pass it into an area to the onrushing Pereira who made a good run but the pass is just a fraction out I was going to go for the double plat double plat yeah I thought you were studiously ignoring no I question, wasn't I just knew that there was going to be Fulham a ball over the top or yeah. an attack with Fulham yeah let's go double plat double platted ponytail pink boots for Darwin Nunez Sender forward for Liverpool, hasn't scored in his last five games or fancy his chances this afternoon. Liverpool have scored in all 20 games they've played in so far this season. Mo Salah's trying to curl a ball towards Nunez. McAllister plays it into Nunez, lays it off here to Gravenberg, the young Dutchman. Diaz with a shot straight at the goalkeeper, Bernd Leno. Had power, just couldn't find the corner. Yeah, a little bit of a mistake from Calvin Bassi, takes his eye off the ball, lets it run through his legs and... Goes into the path of Diaz, takes a snapshot with his right foot straight at Bernd Leno. And Leno's going to have to be on his best game today because if you want to get a result at Anfield, you want to get a result away from home against the big teams, you have to have your goalkeeper in top form. One result already in today. Celtic were 1-0 down away to St Johnston uh, earlier on. They've won the game by three goals to one. 11-point lead at the moment over Rangers. Rangers kick off against St Mirren at three o'clock. We'll have updates uh, on that during our coverage on Five Live Sport this afternoon. Eastley leading Reading by a goal to nil in the FA Cup second round as well. Winners of that one away to Newport or Barnet in the third round. The third round draw we had live uh, just after one o'clock. Uh, on the show this afternoon and we found out Liverpool will go to Arsenal in the third round this is Liverpool Fulham and it's nil-nil at Anfield Salah pokes a ball back at pace to Trent Alexander-Arnold who has the uh, short shorn hair socks rolled down plays back to Kelleher Kelleher across to Virgil van Dijk who strides forward in his turquoise boots Kostas Simikas continues at left back Andy Robertson is still going to be out for a while Andy Robertson of Scotland, of course, will come up against Dominic Soboslai of Hungary at the Euros next summer. We found that out during the, uh, the draw in Hamburg yesterday. Here's Van Dijk on the ball again for Liverpool. Walking pace, just trotting towards the halfway line. Plays to the left to Simikas. Marco Silva, the Fulham manager, just encouraging his team to speed it up a bit and try and put a bit of pressure on Liverpool. And now the long diagonal from left to right from Van Dijk doesn't quite find Salah Robinson has it covered heads it out of play there's two balls on the field that's very quickly removed and Liverpool take the throw well the way Fulham are lining up I was at the Arsenal-Fulham game earlier on in the season I wondered how Fulham would deal with the wide players of, of Arsenal and what they're trying to do is that they're letting the 
the midfield runners go onto the centre backs and they're dealing with the, the wingers in 1v1 situations, which is a very brave thing to do. But they've got a game plan straight away, which looks very similar to what they did at Arsenal away. Liverpool lineup: Quivine Kelleher in goal, Trent Alexander Arnold, Joel Matip, Virgil van Dijk, and Kostas Simikas. Dominic Soboslai, Alexis McAllister, and Ryan Gravenberg. Gravenberg's come into the team. Uh, for Curtis Jones today, if you look at the uh, the Premier League lineup from last weekend away to Manchester City, Salah, Nunez, and Diaz in for Jota. Here is Nunez into the Fulham penalty area. Kenny Tete back in the Fulham team, starting a game for the first time since mid September. Does just enough there to hold him off, clears the ball with his right foot, and out for a throw in to Liverpool on the left. Gloves come off early for Ryan Gravenberg. The gloves are off. Well, Costa. Mine, mine won't be. <laughs> mine won't be coming now. off at all. In fact, I might even. Try and go and grab those and put another <laughs> pair on, to be honest. Well, Lee needs a pair next to you, doesn't he? Yes, producer Lee's forgotten his gloves today. That is school a boy. school boy error on a day like today on Merseyside. Luis Diaz forward to Gravenberg. That was a clever little pass to find Simicas. Diaz was caught late. Play continues. Simicas is cross his block by Tete. Might get a second go, but Tete sticks a foot in and knocks the ball out of play for a Liverpool throw. Leno in goal for Fulham. I'll give you the... 10 outfield players in just a second because Liverpool are moving things quickly at the moment. Trent Alexander-Arnold playing the ball back here to Joel Matip who's got the gloves on. Virgil van Dijk doesn't need gloves, just inside the Fulham half. Steps away from Andreas Pereira. Low pass to Gravenberg, lovely layoff from Diaz again to McAllister. A couple of early clever touches from Luis Diaz, just touching the ball and putting it into the path of a teammate. Gravenberg turn and plays back to Virgil van Dijk, van Dijk to Gravenberg, Gravenberg forward to Diaz, this time he holds on to it, plays a pass out to the left to Simicas, who stretches, just keeps that ball in play, wide on the left, pass in field to Darwin Nunez, into the penalty area, pokes it on to Gravenberg, two white shirts in front of him, forward to Nunez again, Fulham getting bodies in the way, taken off Darwin Nunez, ball up in the air, Harry Wilson comes in with the challenge, van Dijk tackles him, and it goes out for a Fulham throw. The other thing we're going to keep you updated on this afternoon, England are playing cricket again. One day international in Antigua. Dan Norcross is watching. Well, they just lost their first wicket. Phil Salt's gone, caught at point. He was trying to cut a ball that just stuck in the pitch from the left arm of Spinner Moti. He made 45 from 28. Five fours, three sixes. England going very well, though. 77 for one. We're into the start of the ninth over. Thank you, Dan. Bristol City have scored against Norwich. Jason Knight after 34 minutes. Bristol City lead Norwich by a goal to nil. Goalless in all the two o'clock kickoffs in the Premier League so far, including this one at Anfield. A lot of Liverpool attacking. There's more of it coming now. Gravenberg running across the full and midfield. Sobberslice drive straight at Leno. Rebound very nearly comes. Salah's there. Salah sticks it home. The flag is up. It is not his 200th goal for Liverpool. Well, referee has his arm in the air. Bernd Leno is flat on his back at the moment. He took a knock as he tried to scramble to gather the rebound. Liverpool have had two strikes on goal at him, both with real power. The first one he was able to gather, the second one from Soboslay couldn't. And then he dived at the feet of the Liverpool attacker, who was Luis Diaz, got caught, and Salah stuck the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. It's Luis Diaz who's offside as the shot comes in from Zobersley. Diaz is ahead of the, the Fulham defender. And then Bert Leno, he knows nothing about the situation. It's really brave from the goalkeeper, but he might have just come away from it with a, an injury for himself, which will be a real concern for Marco Silva. Marek Rodak is the replacement goalkeeper uh, for Fulham. Long-time player at the club started all three Carabao Cup games this season, four Premier League appearances in total. Lines just being drawn on the screen as they check for the offside here. Luis Diaz is indeed looking offside, so let's just wait and get that confirmed before we take you to Stamford Bridge for an update on Chelsea uh, against Brighton. Referee here, Stuart Atwell, is just waiting to get confirmation from Stockley Park, and the concern for Fulham at the moment is Bernd Leno, their goalkeeper, is down hurt, who was caught by Luis Diaz uh, as he went for the rebound. Liverpool players just clearing the penalty area at the moment. Leno is still down receiving 
the treatment. Why don't we quickly nip to Stamford Bridge then? John Southall's watching Chelsea Brighton. Well, no, good afternoon, Ali Chelsea, Neil Brighton. Neil Brighton dominating the early possession, 61% of it. Neither goalkeeper being tested yet, but Chelsea have a corner over on the right-hand side. Chelsea, Neil Brighton, nil. Uh, no goal, it's been confirmed on the screen away to my right inside the stadium. Luis Diaz caught offside. There has been a goal in the game between Bournemouth and Villa, Aaron Paul. There has, against the run of play, the home side have the lead. Bournemouth 1, Aston Villa nil. Ryan Christie with a gorgeous pass into the path of Antoine Semenyo, who just buried the ball past Emi Martinez in the Villa goal. Bournemouth 1, Aston Villa nil. Aston Villa starting the day fourth in this Premier League table, level on points uh, with Liverpool. So the goal's been ruled out for offside. I can see Bernd Leno is moving his left leg. He's being spoken to by a member of the Fulham medical team, but this is a concern because he's been down for a while. It looked like Diaz's knee caught him in the side of the head, so Fulham will take every care. The other game in the Premier League that kicked off at 2 o'clock this afternoon, West Ham Crystal Palace, John Hunt. We've played 10 minutes here, Ali, it's uh, goalless at the moment, still haven't had a chance yet in the game, although Palace have settled into the game beautifully, knocking it about with style. Michael Elise looking particularly on it today, giving Emerson a rough time down that right-hand side, but it's West Ham nil, Crystal Palace nil. Okay, so you're up to date on everything that's going on in the Premier League. Eastley still leading Reading by a goal to nil in the FA Cup second round. Uh, this is a worry for Burnt Leno and for Fulham, Stephen Warren. Yeah, it is, and I think it's just got to the point now where the players from both sets of teams have started to get the balls on the pitch, trying to keep warm in, in the conditions that are out here. But this is a, a real concern for, for Burnt Leno. It was a, a real strong knee to the head that he took. Um, and hopefully he... Uh, he gets up safely from this, whether he, he carries on or not, but that is a, a real concern. So Bernd Leno continues to receive treatment uh, at the moment. Let's get the latest uh, on the cricket in Antigua, Dan Norcross. Well, one brings two, and it's Will Jacks. He's gone caught behind a little feather through to Shea Hope of the bowling of Joseph for 26. England have lost two for none in seven balls. Ben Duckett and Zach Crawley, England's test openers are at the crease, each of them yet to score. 77 for two after 9.2. OK, so Dan will keep us updated uh, on that one. Players at the moment have replacement balls out on the field and they're just passing them between themselves to keep themselves warm. Mo Salah is slowly making his way towards the edge of the Fulham penalty area. He wants to move in and just check on how Burnt Leno is doing, who is still flat on his back in the six-yard box in front of the Anfield road stand uh, away to our left. In the FA Cup second round, Eastley against Reading, Henry Moran. Three minutes before the break, Eastley still lead Reading by goal to nil. The goal scorer, Paul McCallum, had the ball in the net once again. A header beyond the goalkeeper. They thought it was a second. Referee saw a push in there, disallowed. Eastley distraught with the decision. And Reading hanging on rather here. They haven't been impressive, the League One side. Eastley leading of the National League by goal to nil. Winners of that one away to Newport or Barnet in the third round. We know Liverpool are going to Arsenal. If you miss the draw, it'll be available in full. Websites and app. Uh, some of the ties that were drawn out that caught the eye. Sunderland against Newcastle. Manchester United will go to Wigan. Manchester City are at home to Huddersfield. Tottenham host Burnley. And Chelsea uh, against Preston. Silence around Anfield at the moment. Burnt Leno is slowly being hauled to his feet. Let's check in on another game in the FA Cup. Chesterfield against Leighton Orient. Chris Coles. National League against League One. We're 12 minutes in. Chesterfield nil. Leighton Orient nil in the freezing fog in Chesterfield. We have done really well to get this game going ahead. But it's been a fairly uneventful 12 minutes. Chesterfield nil. Leighton Orient nil. Uh, thank you, Chris. Right, the reason this has taken so long is we're now getting a close-up shot of Burnt Leno, who is on his feet, and he's got a tight black bandage wrapped all the way uh, around his head. He's just wiping moisture from his right eye. He's taken a glancing blow, but at that speed, that must have been a heavy knock, and that's that's still got to be a concern. I mean, they must have checked, Stephen. They must have checked that it, you know, the concussion protocols and all that, that he's okay to continue, but he's going to continue with a heavily bandaged head. Goal at West Ham, John Hunt. With their first attack of the game, West Ham take the lead. West Ham won, Crystal Palace nil. Lovely play from West Ham as well, sweeping down the right-hand side. Sofal put the ball in and swept home by Mohamed Kudos, his third goal of the season. West Ham won, Crystal Palace nil. All the shot of the National League, a uh, league lead Stockport 1-0. FA Cup second round. Back underway here, Burnt Leno 
hauling green he's taken a heavy knock to the head but he's going to continue for fulham his head is heavily bandaged it remains liverpool nil fulham nil Sobersly caught in midfield by a high foot palinia with the foul palinia just back from suspension and liverpool get the free kick stockport have equalized older shot one stockport one you will be able to get a word in at some point i believe this afternoon steve no that's okay you keep going i think the big thing with ben leno is is just Hopefully he's, he's feeling OK, but my concern is is the right eye looks like it's closing over. How's his vision going to be? What's that going to be like? I think this is going to be something that will get assessed throughout the first half just to keep up to date as to, to how he's feeling. What was interesting there as well, Stephen, you spotted it, was that Marek Rodak was sort of out and gently warming up, but he wasn't getting stripped off and ready to go. So clearly the message from the pitch was, in terms of the concussion, he's going to be OK. we just got to get him strapped up. Yeah, I think what, what the other thing that I did notice was that there was a few blood swabs on the floor, so right. maybe he's had, that's why the taping of the head has, has been done, that they were making sure that that was sort of uh, concealed properly and probably glued back together, whatever it might be, but then they felt that he was in, in good condition to carry the game on. Been one of Fulham's best players so far this season, certainly going to be tested this afternoon. Trent Alexander-Arnold, one of those wonderful through balls. Syndicats lobbing a pass into the penalty area, hits the arm of Tete that was dangling by his left-hand side. Liverpool fans went up with a penalty appeal, nothing given. Here's Darwin Nunez, Nunez to Soboslai, back to Alexander-Arnold, Diaz on to Salah, Salah chips the ball up in the air. Oh, Bassi lets it bounce, but he's OK because Leno comes hurtling off his line collects it in both hands and then clears it on the volley right-footed downfield and Joel Matip carefully controls it on his instep and Fulham have barely seen any possession of the football in the first 15 minutes of this game Mo Salah onto it for Liverpool bringing it infield off the right-hand touchline looking to thread one through to Nunez passes intercepted McAllister runs into Polinia he's flattened and now he needs a little bit of treatment that's another head knock as well so we're going to get another stoppage in the game purely right. accidental yeah it was harry wilson harry i think wilson. he actually takes a blow to the face with the ball i think it's kicked at him from point blank by uh, alexis McAllister. he's actually come down he's saying i'm absolutely fine i don't need any help uh, it is it's just a ball in the face from uh, alexis McAllister to harry wilson but he'll be fine no problems there I can't actually see it from our position up here. You can now if you look carefully, but just looking on the TV monitor there, the rain is coming down, just to make it that little bit colder for everyone inside the ground. Bournemouth leading Villa by a goal to nil. West Ham one up on Palace in the Premier League. Chelsea Brighton is nil-nil. Commentary on that one over on Sports Extra. We've got Manchester City Tottenham in full. It kicks off at half past four, and that'll be followed by 6.06 tonight. So this game hasn't really got going due to the long injury stoppage for Bernd Leno. He's on the ball now, hurried into a clearance by Nunez, up towards Jimenez. Jimenez bumped over by Virgil van Dijk, and that will be a free kick for Fulham. Deadlock broken at Stamford Bridge, John Southall. Chelsea lead Brighton by one goal to nil. Baddy Ashiel on the left of the six-yard box, hooked it back across for Fernandez at the back post, and he nodded it in for his first league goal for the club. Chelsea won. Brighton nil. Thank you, John. Liverpool nil, Fulham nil. 17 minutes in, first half. Calvin Bassey, summer signing from Ajax for Fulham, plays back to Leno. Took his eye off the ball there and has sliced it up in the air. Bassey heads it forward from the right back position. Harrison Reed steps in, heads it straight up in the air. Fulham making a bit of a mess of clearing this. Eventually it goes forward. Jimenez flicks it on. Matip side foots a pass to McAllister, straight up the middle to Nunez. Clever layoff to Sommersly. Dummies the shot and he's tripped. 25 yards out, that's going to be a free kick. Really nice play from Darwin Nunez as the ball comes into him. Little flick round the corner, takes two Fulham players out of the game. And Sobers like, you think they passes on to Mohamed Salah, but such is his confidence, just chops inside and he just draws the foul from João Paulinho. Just going to say on the Salah goal that was ruled out for offside, and rightly so, because Luis Diaz on the follow up was in the offside position. The next goal for him is a, is a very, very special one. He joins an elite club of players at Liverpool who will have scored 200 or more goals for the club. You don't want a fiddly VAR, is it, isn't it? You you want a proper... <laughs> oh, he won't we, care. Well, he won't care, he but... Won't care. No, he won't care. You will for your commentary. <laughs> You want to announce him, you want to announce him, probably, don't you? You want the moment, don't you? You want the moment for him, you want the moment for the fans inside the stadium. Will he take the free kick? I think it's more likely to be Trent Alexander-Arnold, scorer of Liverpool's goal 
against Manchester City last week. Soboslai likes to hit, and we've already seen that so far today. Just watching him right from the start today. Look out, Scotland, in the Euros next summer. Hungary qualified really well for the finals, and he is going to be a, a real danger. Right, free kick in the inside right channel. Alexander-Arnold kills it! is and that is why Mo Salah left it to him Liverpool won Fulham nil my word what a strike from Trent Alexander-Arnold we talked about him we picked him up before the show we talked about his capabilities this guy is an outstanding technical player and this is one of the best free kicks you will see this season crashes it against the crossbar Ben Leno dives to his left hand side he's nowhere near it and as he runs to the fans he gives the shush celebration that he gave to the Manchester City fans last week with a real smile playing yeah. across his lips as well as Jurgen Klopp would say Trent Alexander-Arnold is in a good moment match of the day two BBC one half ten check that free kick out another goal at Bournemouth Aaron Paul equaliser for Aston Villa it's come from Liam Bailey and believe me you're going to want to check this one out on match of the day two as well he's chopped in off the left gone into the box back out and just drilled the ball into the corner of Neto's net what a goal this is for Aston Villa Bournemouth one Aston Villa one so 1-1 one, one there, Liverpool leading Fulham by a goal to nil here, Chelsea won Brighton nil at Stamford Bridge, West Ham leading Palace by a goal to nil. First time ball from Alexander-Arnold from deep, Nunez chases, Leno's off his line and he knocks it into the stands. This was already uh, a difficult job for Fulham right at the start of the day, now it gets even trickier. They're a goal behind, they've got to try and chase it and Liverpool have already scored their 50th goal of this season. They've won 10 out of 10 at Anfield in all competitions so far this season. And each of those wins, Stephen, has been by two oh, goals. Yeah. Oh, another goal at Stamford Bridge, John South. Oh, Chelsea lead by two goals to nil. Levi Colwell with the goal. The referee checked it. It did cross the line. Just watching it again. Colwell with the header almost cleared off the line and it just crept over. Chelsea two, Brighton nil. Uh, full and clear from deep up towards Jimenez. It's over his head and it lands at the feet of Van Dijk towards... McAllister, goals going in all the time in the Premier League this afternoon. Here's Gravenberg bringing it forward for Liverpool, looking to slide in Salah on the right-hand side. Back to Soboslai, Liverpool have lost it. Another goal at Bournemouth, Aaron Paul. Villa have turned this one on its head and you will not get an easier finish, Diego Carlos. Bournemouth 1, Aston Villa 2. The ball floated into the air from a free kick. It's an absolute mess from the Bournemouth defence and Diego Carlos just down the penalty spot to just guide the ball past Neto. Bournemouth 1, Aston Villa two half time FA Cup second round shock on at the moment easily 11th in the National League leading Reading by a goal to nil that's a half time scoreline uh, Liverpool playing the ball back into their own half Bristol City won Norwich nil also a half time scoreline in the championship midway through the first half here at Anfield light freezing rain falling Jurgen Klopp wrapped up warm familiar black baseball cap on top of his head as Virgil van Dijk starts a move and plays the ball out to Simicats, into McAllister, played forward to Luis Diaz, or oh, Bassi thought he had that covered, Diaz nearly took it off him, Bassi plays to his right to Tete, Liverpool players swarming around Fulham players inside their own half, and all Tete can do is knock it out of play. Now the pressing's been really good from Liverpool, the tempo at which they're playing at has been very, very high, Fulham really struggling to find any way out, the ball's up to Jimenez, no quality on them, and when he does, Virgil van Dijk is right behind him and winning the headers, so he's just no outlet for Fulham. Alexander-Arnold onto Soboslai, wide to Salah, level with the edge of the Fulham penalty area, back to Soboslai, looking for the back heel to Salah, challenge comes in from Robinson, ball reaches Iwobi, Iwobi is run off it by Alexander-Arnold, doing the defensive duties there and doing them well, and now van Dijk is in the mood and striding forward, cruising towards the uh, Fulham back line, receives a return pass from Diaz, back to Diaz again, wide on the left, into Gravenberg, it's moving fluently for Liverpool at the moment, cross is headed away, Alexander Ronald stretches out, volleys a pass to Matip and plays it back to Kelleher, nice football Stephen. Yeah, really nice football and this is what Fulham wouldn't have wanted to see, they don't want Liverpool in that groove, they want to try and knock them out of it, they might be able to do that now with a counter-attack. Yeah, Robinson the American, 
place to Andreas Pereira. Both of them with the peroxide here. Here's Alex Iwobi, corner of the Liverpool penalty. Low cross in through the legs of Kelleher. Harry Wilson doesn't celebrate. Former Liverpool man back at Anfield makes a darting run towards the near post. The cross was perfect. He gets his first time touch, catches it sweetly, and Kelleher just couldn't close his legs in time. Liverpool won full and one. Yeah, it's a mistake from Liverpool. Simple ball from Joel Matip out to Mohamed Salah. It's intercepted by Anthony Robinson in the left back position. And then he drives forward. They get a nice little overlap down that left hand side, drilled into the middle. Late run from Harry Wilson, and he just toe poked it through the legs of Kelleher who stood still can't get anywhere near it really good goal from Fulham great response Harry Wilson's first Premier League goal of the season comes at a venue very familiar to him good run made into the near post and he stuck it into the back of the net fourth goal at Bournemouth Aaron Paul uh, no goal that strike by Diego Carlos has been chalked off the, the, the VAR official Chris Kavanagh taking a long long time ruin over the decision but the decision was that both Luca Dina and Pal Torres strayed offside when the initial ball was popped in so it is Bournemouth 1 Aston Villa 1 right so not four goals we're back to two goals Bournemouth 1 Villa 1 Chelsea 2 Brighton 0 West Ham 1 Palace 0 and Fulham have levelled here at Anfield with their with their first attack of the game it has to be said Stephen Warren yeah they had an, an attack really on in the game but then nothing they haven't laid a glove on Liverpool they haven't got close to them they've sat back they've just took that pressure that Liverpool have been throwing at them but credit to them when that moment of quality was needed Nadem spoke about it before the game you have to be clinical away from home they were clinical starting the day 14th in the Premier League table eight points clear of the bottom three four points off the top half here is Iwobi who was involved in the build-up to that move former Everton man so predictably gets booed by some of the Liverpool supporters a step over from Andreas Pereira twisting and turning trying to get away from Sovaslai finds Iwobi Iwobi's cross hits Sovaslai then comes back off Iwobi and that's given as a goal kick for Liverpool um not too much Kelleher could have done there Steve I mean, he's in the right place to try and save it just went quick as a flash through his legs and didn't that's it? so difficult for goalkeepers when it is fizzed in and around the feet and such was the quality of the touch it was a death touch from Harry Wilson we talked about that position of the central midfielder for Liverpool that number six McAllister caught out not tracking the run of Harry Wilson Darwin Nunez attacking down the right so Mo Salah has moved in field Nunez can't find Salah with the pass here's Iwobi again inside the Fulham half plays back to Bassi chased by Nunez, Bassi turns it back to his goalkeeper Leno, Harrison Reed, just inside his penalty area, forward to Iwobi, back to Anthony Robinson, up towards Jimenez oh, what a flick that is, on the back heel and Iwobi, looking to beat McAllister for pace, knocked it way past him, McAllister had a little head start gets there first, plays back to Keller Keller with a lovely pass out to Alexander Arnold, lobs the ball into midfield couldn't get to Sobersly, Fulham sensing a little encouragement here, Liverpool won Fulham won. They're starting to pick up the second balls. They're starting to win the battles in midfield, and that's key to getting back into this game. Joao Palinia to Iwobi. Iwobi just tried to nip between McAllister and Alexander Arnold. Alexander Arnold gets a foot on the ball, and out it goes for a throw in to Fulham. So 1 1 here, 1 1 at Bournemouth. A Diego Carlos goal eventually disallowed for Villa, Bournemouth 1, Villa 1, Chelsea 2, Brighton 0, West Ham 1, Palace 0, all games available as commentaries on the BBC this afternoon, Chelsea Brighton over on Sports Extra, the other two 2 o'clock kickoffs available on the website now, Simicast, Simicast trying to get past Bassi, Bassi puts his body in the way, blocks him, stops the move which is crucial and doesn't get the yellow card so that's good defended by Calvin Bassett oh, he had to make the foul because Simicas Abida got inside was playing a simple ball into two runners it was Nunez and Diaz who'd ran beyond him so that was a dangerous situation very good tactical foul how's the heated blanket all good yep <laughs> all good nice and toasty here I you feel, I can feel it all good thanks and feel the warmth from <laughs> from here never knowingly underprepared Stephen Warnock for a winter game the football oh the Christmas lights I forgot about those Owen yeah. our engineer has delivered us Christmas lights twinkly lights uh, across the commentary position Lovely here this. at Anfield beautiful Simicass is curling ball oh good header just over the bar is it Matip I think it was Van Dijk. Van Dijk two of them jumping together good power on the header just cleared the crossbar yeah lovely ball in as well from 
Costa Simicus just allowed it to go into an area where both centre backs could go and attack it. I think it is Joel Matip who actually gets his head on it. Just over Van Dyke. Yeah. They, they jumped together, didn't they? Just over Van Dyke. Snood is up for Jurgen Klopp. So all we can see of Jurgen Klopp is two eyes and a nose. And the rest of it is all smothered in warm black clothing. Jimenez and Van Dyke do battle for a ball inside the Liverpool half. 29 minutes gone. We're going to have a fair bit of added time at the end of this first half. Durant Leno seems OK for Fulham, having taken a knock to the head early on. He will be on the ball just inside the Liverpool half towards Jimenez. Van Dyke, quick as a flash, moves in and very calmly takes it off him. Alexander-Arnold, stunning opening goal for Liverpool. But the equaliser coming from the former Liverpool man, Harry Wilson. Uh, Alexander-Arnold on the ball inside his own half. Matip in the right-back position, forward to Salah, laid back to Alexander-Arnold. Swings a diagonal from right to left. Tete has it covered, sprinting back and nods it back to his goalkeeper. They've done that really well so far, the Fulham uh, full-backs, Tete and Anthony Robinson. They, they realise that that switch of play is what Liverpool look for. They play narrow, but they're very quick to adjust the body positions, adjust the feet. Such a difficult skill, a skill that I struggle with in my career. It's such a difficult one to get the flight of the ball, but they're doing that so, so well. Great turn from Gravenberg, holds off his man and feeds Diaz on the left. Support from Simicas on the outside. Sliding challenge is missed by Tete. Simicas floated cross towards Salah. Backpedalling is Anthony Robinson, wins the header, chases his own header. Now Salah gets it off him, down by the byline, lays it back towards Gravenberg. Harrison Reed read it well and clears. Only as far as Alexander Arnold, driven cross into the penalty area. Harry Wilson heads it away. Van Dijk comes steaming forward, nods it down, Nunez battles for the ball, then falls down very dramatically just outside the penalty area. It's going to be a goal kick for Fulham, not sure what contact there was on Darwin Nunez, referee not impressed. No, I'm not impressed myself, I think it's a dive from Nunez, you can't be doing that, I mean, it's a physical game, don't be going down too easily, you're just admiring his hair there, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm just trying to think how else to describe it, because both sides of it look like a sort of tortoise shell that's split in half down the middle. I, I don't see that. Do you not? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. Liverpool won, Fulham won. Good header from Harry Wilson. Could be in again. Slight miscontrol edge of the box. He was trying to play the one-two with Iwobi. Fulham causing Liverpool a few problems here. Jimenez battling with Van Dijk again. Uh, on the turn is Gravenberg, under pressure, flicks the ball into Harrison Reed, shins thrown for Liverpool. A little bit of complacency creeping into Liverpool's game, and Harry Wilson, with a better touch, is through on goal. Van Dijk misses the first ever header against Jimenez, and then has to be better defending from Costa Simicas against Harry Wilson. Just glides past him, but can't quite get his final touch right. Before today's visit, Fulham had only scored five goals on their last 20 competitive visits to Anfield. So the goals don't come too often. They have come this afternoon. Liverpool won, Fulham won. Uh, ladies at Bournemouth, Aaron Paul. Bournemouth won, Aston Villa won, the home side just turning the pressure up. A notch, Antoine Semenyo with a couple of great chances. First of all, you know. driving forward, shot deflected, and it spins behind for a Fulham corner. The ball was given away by Darwin Nunez as we jumped in on Aaron there. Could have ended up in the back of the net. Fulham corner to come. Far too much space of uh, given to Anthony Robinson there to drive through the middle and get his shot away but lazy from Darwin Nunez a simple switch of play tries to blast it across to Mohamed Salah and another breakdown in play from Liverpool that could have been costly still remains Bournemouth 1 Villa 1 as Aaron was saying corner for Fulham in front of the cop away to our right Liverpool defenders stationed edge of the six-yard box easy header away for Matip Iwobi will get there first for Fulham inside the Liverpool half. High lofted ball from him, way too far. And straight into the arms of Keller, who catches it cleanly, slings it out to Alexander Arnold, who's on the left, dummies the pass to Diaz, moves past Andreas Pereira, who tried to bring him down very clumsily and aggressively. Alexander Arnold gets the ball back again, might tee himself up for a left footer, takes a slight deflection, loops over the bar, corner Liverpool. A oh, lovely play from Trent Alexander Arnold, glides past Pereira, as you say, tries to side them down, but he continues use that run, little one-two with Zobersly who spots him in danger in, in uh, space, chops inside onto his weaker left foot but still happy enough to get the shot in at goal, leads to a corner. 
full commentary on Manchester City against Tottenham to come at half four on Five Live at BBC Sounds this afternoon. Simicast waiting to take the corner from the left. An away swinger. Here it comes into the near post. Drops down. Van Dijk shoots. That's blocked. Van Dijk has another go. Third go. Can't get it towards the goal. Liverpool still have it outside the box now with Simicast. Simicast's cross uh, is off target. Behind it goes for a goal kick to Fulham. Great defending from Fulham. Had to be alive to the situation. Van Dijk blocked a couple of times and really strong defending there from Fulham. We spoke before the game and saying that you've got to be at your best defensively. So far, credit to Fulham, they've defended exceptionally well. The goal they concede is an absolute wonder goal from Trent Alexander-Arnold. Liverpool won, Fulham won. Liverpool fans cheering and whistling because it's taken a while for Fulham to get the game back underway. Although the referee blows the whistle, doesn't seem too bothered about it and eventually Burnt Leno clears with his right foot. The ball is headed infield. Halfway line, nodded forward towards Harry Wilson, lobbed up towards Iwobi, chests it down 25 yards out. Tries to flick a pass over the top of the Liverpool defence, dealt with by Alexis McAllister. Sobberslice pass doesn't reach Salah. Pereira jumps, falls on the floor, he's not fouled, says the referee. Play on Liverpool. Alexander-Arnold loves this. Look at the space he's got to roam into here as he drifts up to the halfway line, curls it down the inside right channel. Perfect ball, Nunez looking for Salah, couldn't quite find him. Still might be Liverpool's chance here. Salah and Diaz run into each other, the offside flag is up. Fulham will have a chance to clear their lines. Back to Bournemouth, Aaron. Bournemouth 1, Villa 1. I was just saying, Ali, we've seen two cracking saves from Emi Martinez. The first from Anton Semenya down the left-hand side, drilling the ball in towards goal. Acrobatic save from the goalkeeper. And then Dominic Solanke, point-blank rage. He should have buried it, but there was Martinez with a big save. Bournemouth 1, Villa 1. Bournemouth on the attack. Aaron, it's not often I can stop you talking, so I have to take the chance when I can. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Uh, Liverpool 1, Fulham 1. Aaron was a guest on the Fantasy 606 podcast earlier this week. Still available to listen to. Available via the BBC Sounds app. Nunez looking to find Salah. Passes deflected up in the air and then headed back by Tim Ream, the Fulham captain, to his goalkeeper, Leno. Salah, ever threatening, ever dangerous. But Fulham bring the ball out of their own half with Anthony Robinson. Gives it to Iwobi, continues his run. Iwobi can't find him. Alexander-Arnold intercepts, goes out for a Fulham throw. It's become a more even game. It has. Credit to Fulham. They've just grown into this game. They've weathered that early storm from Liverpool. Now they're starting to find ways in behind with those runners from midfield and beyond the strikers, and it's working for all of them. Yeah, look, Andreas Pereira onto the ball from Iwobi. McAllister tracked him well, makes the challenge. Here's Alexander-Arnold curling ball up towards the halfway line intercepted by Ream on his chest Palinia, clever control, plays to his left Jimenez under pressure, gets a shove in the back from Sobersly, no free kick but it will be a throw in for Fulham on the left, Anfield's quite quiet at the moment, nine minutes remaining in the first half Liverpool 1 Fulham 1, so a point would take Liverpool to 29 put them level with Manchester City who are at home to Tottenham later on in the Premier League, we've got full commentary on that game here on Five Live and they would be four points behind Arsenal with a draw here Arsenal-Liverpool is an FA Cup third round tie Harrison Reed down by the corner flag on the right cross blocked by Simicas who's able to keep that in play does brilliantly for Liverpool to wriggle out of a tight spot plays it to Gravenberg takes on Tete for pace beats him finds Nunez good challenge from Bassi on Nunez no to foul but again, it stopped the attack when it needed to because it was opening up for Liverpool on the right. No, I'm with you, Ali. I thought it was a great tackle from Bassi. He just turned into him and Nunes didn't have a clue he was there. Had to be quicker. Lovely ball from Trent Alexander. Oh, again, the passing is bang on point. Finds Salah. Salah, edge of the penalty area. Could this be the moment? No, he goes for the cross to the far post. Nodded down towards Nunez. Nunez is tackled and the ball goes out for a Liverpool throw attacking position on the left. His passing's outstanding left and right foot as well, isn't it? I mean, that was a left-footed pass into the pass of, uh, path of Mohamed Salah. Just gets Liverpool on the ascendancy again. Luis Diaz, good skills, quick feet. Tete clears, only as far as McAllister. McAllister, long way out, what a strike! What an unbelievable strike for Alexis McAllister to score his first goal for Liverpool Football Club. The stadium is on its feet. It's set up beautifully for him from 30 yards out. He's hit it so sweetly and it's gone bending away into the top corner. No keeper in the world is stopping that. 
Liverpool 2, Fulham 1. Oh, it's two world-class goals. I just wonder whether it might take the slightest of deflections. As it pops up, I'm thinking, don't hit it. Don't hit it from that far out. Well, I was wrong because he hits it absolutely perfectly. Alexis McAllister sits up on his right foot, hits across the ball perfectly, and it just evades Bert Leno. It doesn't take a deflection. It's just arrowed into the top corner. What a goal. Arguably two of the best goals you'll see in the Premier League this season. Wow. That absolutely takes the breath away, the quality of that strike from Alexis McAllister. And you're right, Stephen, in terms of trying to choose a better goal between the two, because when that sets off in the air, Leno thinks he's getting that, but as it moves in the air, it's moving at speed, and it's swinging away from him right into the top corner. I mean, McAllister can't quite believe the quality of the goal, and Jurgen Klopp, I mean, we see that smile all the time. You don't often see it wider than that. No, that is a wonder strike, and such as the movement on the ball was why I thought it was deflected or might have just evaded Bent Leno. But when you see the goal again, I mean, check it out tonight on Match of the Day, because it is an absolute belter. Yeah, if Jimmy Anderson is bowling right arm over, that's one of those wicked ones that dips in. So to the left-hander, it would go away from the left-hander towards the slip cordon. Well, there we go. Another wicket's gone at the cricket, Dan Norcross. Fredo Ben Duckett going on the sweep. It hit three reverse sweeps to the boundary, then went for a conventional one and just dragged it onto his leg stump. England 110 for three. After 15.4, Duckett goes for 20. Harry Brook has arrived at the crease. But John Southall's hit a few like Alexis McAllister in his time. John's watching Chelsea Brighton. Oh, plenty, Ali, plenty. Chelsea lead Brighton by two goals to nil. Lovely bit of play there from McCarl and Woodrick. Turned his man 50 yards out, ran in the Brighton defence, hit it from 20 yards, a fraction wide of the left-hand post. Chelsea 2, Brighton nil. Liverpool coming again, leading Fulham by two goals to one. The stadium had fallen a bit silent. That's definitely woken everyone up. Graven Burke on the ball, inside right channel for Liverpool. Coming towards the edge of the Fulham penalty area, back to Alexander-Arnold, pulling the strings again. Luis Diaz a little short with his pass, and Iwobi in with a tackle. So Fulham will try and come on the counter. Harry Wilson onto it quickly on the halfway line. Wilson surrounded by red shirts. Thought he was caught and fouled. No free kick given. Liverpool win the ball back, and it comes back to Quivine Kelleher. Goal in the FA Cup, Chris Coles. Stadium very much alive here as well because Chesterfield of the National League lead League One Leighton Orient by a goal to nil, an own goal. Oli Banks fired it in. The unfortunate Rob Hunt got the ricochet past the keeper. Chesterfield one, Leighton Orient nil. Okay, so National League leads League One in that game, and it's the same Eastley Reading as well. Eastley still leading Reading by a goal to nil. FA Cup second round. Graven Burke on the ball for Liverpool. And Fulham probably thinking, well, what have we got to do? We scored a good goal of our own here at Anfield, but those are two worldies that have gone past them. Yeah, they are, but much of the same for Fulham because they have been in the game and they've been given opportunities to, to get men forward, which they've done extremely well. That's what you've got to do as well. We spoke about it the other night, about Manchester United being brave, running past the ball in Istanbul. Fulham are doing that tonight. They're running beyond the Liverpool midfielders, beyond the defence, and it's causing problems. Kelleher, just outside his penalty area, Pereira was there right in front of him, but he's taken his time and picked a perfect pass to Gravenberg. Gravenberg across to Soberslai in the middle of the Fulham half. Let's it run to McAllister. Played to Diaz. Diaz on the turn finds Simicas. Simicas to McAllister again. Back to Diaz. Diaz starts to run in towards the corner of the box. The pass is intercepted and it goes out for a throw into Liverpool on the left. Simicas takes it. Here's Diaz. Diaz just chips a pass back to Van Dyke. Van Dyke's got all the time in the world to find Alexander Arnold right in the middle of this pitch here at Anfield and he just plays the ball behind Mo Salah has to come back down the right hand touchline to collect it Salah plays back to Alexander Arnold again Iwobi comes chasing here's Matip Matip to Kelleher Kelleher in a central position edge of his D to Matip across to Alexander Arnold so Liverpool just toying with Fulham at the moment they've got themselves back in front leading by two goals to one heading towards added time at the end of the first half Alexander Arnold playing back to Kelleher, who changes the angle of attack slightly towards Van Dijk. Another goal at Stamford Bridge, John South. Brighton have got one back, Chelsea two, Brighton one. Lovely goal from Buonate on the right of the penalty area, curled it into the bottom left-hand corner, keeper a full stretch, couldn't do anything about it. Chelsea two, Brighton one. 
Van Dyke, thank you, John. Plays across to Alexander Arnold. Match of the day two. Going to be a good watch tonight. BBC One at half ten. Here's Salah. Salah's ball to Gravenberg, who's popping up all over the place for Liverpool. Darwin Nunez being the link man, trying to play it back to Salah. Pass was intercepted. Fulham with a chance to play out. Nice layoff from Jimenez to Iwobi. Iwobi plays back to Anthony Robinson, Robinson to Iwobi, inside his own half, wide on the left, Liverpool get bodies around him, Reed slides in, and it goes out for a Liverpool throw, the Chesterfield goal against Leighton Orient has now been given as a Brandon Cooper own goal, FA Cup second round, Chesterfield leading Leighton Orient by a goal to nil, and Eastleigh leading Reading by a goal to nil, Steve Crossman will remind you of the third round draw at half-time here on Five Live and BBC Sounds, if you want the full details, uh, if your team's not been mentioned as yet, you've not heard it, BBC Sport website and app, the place for you to go and find that out. Bassi heads it away, Simicas in central midfield, trying to win it for Liverpool, here's McAllister, sees Salah in a bit of space, first time ball, Darwin Nunez, oh, nearly found Salah with the return pass, who was moving on the inside, clearance only as far as Alexander-Arnold, Nunez now on the right-hand side, makes a run, little dribble between two defenders, stretches out a leg and makes a tackle as the ball got away from him and it does go behind for a Fulham goal kick. Stephen Warner. Yeah, he's been a weak link today, Darwin Nunez, just not going his way at all, the little balls round the corner, they're not finding players, the link-up play has been poor, just overrunning that ball there, causes a, a commits a foul, but he has to be better, Nunez, because... There's a little bit of pressure on him to perform well because of the way Cody Gappo's played in the last game. Nine minutes of added time getting underway at Anfield. Back to Stamford Bridge in a second. Hang on, John Southall, because Liverpool have won the ball back inside the Fulham half. Diaz is crossing towards the edge of the box, just over the head of Nunez. McAllister nods the clearance forward to Soboslai. Clever passing and running from Liverpool. Little flip ball over the top. Oh, Gravenberg tried to hit one on the volley from 25 yards out to match the quality of the strikes we've seen so far today, but didn't really get anything on it and Fulham bring it up to the halfway line. And this is where they're looking dangerous. And Pereira feeds it out to Iwobi on the left. Iwobi, Alexander Arnold and McAllister go over and do a bit of double teaming on it. Iwobi plays back to Pereira. Ball in field to Joao Polinia. Salah comes back to try and make the challenge. Shot deflected behind for a Fulham corner. Come in, John Southall. It's all going wrong for Chelsea. They lead Brighton by two goals to one, but Conor Gallagher has been sent off for a second yellow card. It was a foul on Billy Gilmore, his former teammate. He went sliding in. Second yellow came off, and Conor Gallagher is now making his way off the pitch here at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea are down to ten men. Chelsea two, Brighton one. Half-time reports on the way here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Plenty more Premier League commentaries on the way next week for you as well. Corner for Fulham. Trail Liverpool by two goals to one. A lot of added time coming now at the end of this first half. Pereira's cross. He didn't hit that properly and Soboslai clears. Salah will chase but Anthony Robinson's quick and gets there first for Fulham. Takes it round Salah. Keeps the ball in play just inside the Liverpool half. Outside of his left foot finds Jimenez who just prods it to his left. Wants the return ball from Pereira. Simicas tackles him. Another corner for Fulham. Stephen Moore. used the ball so, so well, Fulham, when they've attacked. They haven't been wasteful. More often than not, they've got something out of it, i.e. a corner or a throw in high up the pitch or a, an attempt at goal. So it's been really positive from Fulham and they've pushed Liverpool back. Four wins for Fulham so far this season. One on Merseyside away at Everton. The others have all come at home against Luton, Sheffield United and Wolves. Corner for Fulham here. Liverpool leading 2-1. Pereira's delivery. Jimenez is flick. Oh, Keller gets a foot on it, but can't keep it out. Kenny Tete celebrates, and Fulham have a second equaliser in the first half. No, they don't. The offside flag goes up, and the video assistant referee back at Stockley Park, Paul Tierney and his team, will have a look at this. So let's wait and see Stephen Warner. Bit of a scruffy one as the corner came in, and Jimenez got the flick on at the near post. Well, if it's offside, they get away with one Liverpool because this is really poor marking. It doesn't look like he's the player offside, Kenny Tete, from the first angle that I've seen. I might be wrong, but it looks like Jao Paulinia is the player offside. And if it is offside, it's, it spares Kelleher's blushes because it's a really poor piece of goalkeeping from him. He spills the ball and Liverpool might, might just get out of jail here. The question will be as well... Is Polina affecting the play behind Tete? 
The lines will be drawn on the screen soon, and we are watching it on our monitor here at Anfield. I'm just looking at Darwin Nunez's right oh, foot. foot. Is that enough to play on? Good point. Both Tete and Paulinho. This might this stand. This will be very close. Yeah. yeah. This might stand. Last time Fulham scored more than once in a game at Anfield was back in October 1966. That's how long ago it was, the year that he won the World Cup, and they're hoping they've got a second goal here. We're waiting. I, I think it's going to be onside. Darwin Nunez's Side. right foot. Let's have a look. I think that's on, you know. Do I you? really do. Do you? We're looking again. Jurgen Klopp is anxiously waiting as is Marco Silva on the touchline they're going to take their time here they want to get this absolutely spot on it's an awkward one for Kelleher as well it's a clever little poke with the right foot by Tete which sort of catches Kelleher out as he's coming off his line it hits his left leg as he's diving to his right and then just sort of spins behind him and ends up in the back of the net he desperately stretches back to try and claw it away from going over the goal line, but this one's taken a while. Yeah, I think Kelleher expects him to take a touch, doesn't he? Anticipates that touch. Goal. Fulham have their second equaliser. Kenny Tete celebrates back in the team, playing a game for the first time since mid-September, and he's scored at Anfield. What a game. Liverpool 2, Fulham 2. Fulham. John Hunt patiently waiting at the London Stadium. Half-time West Ham Palace. Yes, and at half-time it's 1-0 to West Ham. That Mohamed Kudas goal after 13 minutes. The highlight of the game for West Ham and indeed the highlight of the game so far. Game with very, very few chances. The best for Palace was Anderson's free kick, which got a wicked deflection off the wall and just dropped agonisingly wide for Palace. West Ham won, Palace nil at half-time. In the Championship, Bristol City uh, one Norwich one and Norwich equaliser comes through a George Tanner own goal Liverpool two uh, Fulham two here half time Chesterfield against Leighton Orient in the FA Cup second round go there in a second because here comes Fulham again with Raul Jimenez playing wide to Alex Iwobi Liverpool under a bit of pressure Iwobi plays it back to Jimenez lays it off edge of the box to Polinia finds Iwobi again Liverpool now back in numbers out wide to Anthony Robinson Robinson rolls the ball into the Liverpool penalty area. Pereira plays it back to him, looking for the cutback, scoop to the far post, just too much on it. It's beyond Harry Wilson, he will get there first. Chips a little pass back to Tete, who uses Wilson again on the right. Wilson's got time to control it, cross hits Simicast, and it's a Fulham corner. Chris Coles. Chesterfield 1, Leighton Orient 0, Brandon Cooper's own goal for the non-league side. They are much the better, and they deserve this 1-0 lead at half-time over Leighton Orient. Thank you, Chris. More half-time reports to come. Liverpool 2, Fulham 2. We play six minutes of nine minutes added time at the end of this first half. We've got a little bit more as well for the VAR. You yes, sure? We will. Uh, Pereira, ready to take the corner in a ghostly silent Anfield at the moment for Fulham. It's an away swinger. Powerful header. Kelleher saves and it's smashed in by Tim Ream. That's offside. Now, Tim Ream waves his wags his finger and says I wasn't offside Fulham have the ball in the back of the net for the third time assistant referee's flag went up very quickly they'll have another look at this one yeah but again real concern for Liverpool from set pieces I mean they've been so strong from them this season this one looks very obvious that he is offside he goes a little bit too early there Tim Ream uh, Tim Ream but it's Palinia with a free header down into the ground and credit to Kelleher, he makes a really good save to his right-hand side, gets down, parries it out, Tim Reeve should be offside. Yeah, looking at the replays we've seen, I don't think this one should take too long. Our referee Stuart Atwell is still waiting though, Kelleher makes the save to his right, Reeve does well actually to stick his left leg up in the air, athletically smash it home, but yes, they've checked it, offside. Liverpool 2, Fulham 2, half-time at Stamford Bridge, John Southall. Eventful half, Chelsea 2, Brighton 1, Fernandez headed in the first for Chelsea, Colwell the second, poor defending for both, Colwell's first goal for the club, Buenate then curled in for Brighton to make it 2-1, but Conor Gallagher sent off late on in the half, a second yellow, caught Gilmore as he slid through, got the ball but caught the player, and it's changed the complexion of this game, Chelsea 2, Brighton 1. Salah ball to Nunez, Nunez cross comes in, uh, dealt with well by Bassi at the near post, Offside flag has gone up anyway, and Fulham will get a free kick. Yeah, he's just too eager again, Nunez. Just hold your run, just time the runs better. He's looking to get in behind, but you've got to be more clever and more aware of the defenders of Fulham. But 
lovely play by Zobaslai and Mohamed Salah to get up the pitch quickly. Freezing rain continues to fall here at Anfield. Darwin Nunez frustrated that the game isn't already back underway. Burnt Leno clears long downfield. Van Dijk up majestically to win the ball in the air. Gravenberg turns it round the corner. Tim Ring bravely throws himself at the ball to win a header. Nods it towards Iwobi, chased by Soboslai, held off by Alexander-Arnold. Runs it past Alexander-Arnold, but too far and out for a throw-in to Liverpool. Replacement ball immediately slung into the hands of the Liverpool oh, right back. He missed a trick there, Iwobi. Just throw the ball in your arms onto the pitch. Slow the game down completely. Don't let Liverpool try and get any momentum in this game. Well, he's a good, honest, upstanding citizen. That's why, Stephen. You'd have thrown the ball on. <laughs> Alexander-Arnold <laughs> to Matip. Matip encouraged forward here, has an option wide to his right-hand side. Now the ball fired into the feet of Salah. Salah plays the 1-2 in Nunez. Here's Salah, right-footed volley, saved by Leno. Wilson miscues a clearance, the ball's still loose inside the Fulham penalty area. Simicas just trying to turn on the edge of the box, plays it back to Luis Diaz. Clever run made by Nunez. Nunez with a touch, throws himself to the floor, never going to get that decision. And Bassi clears up towards the halfway line. Van Dijk, little one-two with McAllister, across it comes to Matip, and back it goes to Kelleher. Bournemouth Villa, Aaron Paul. Bournemouth 1, Aston Villa 1, 45 quality minutes of football. Chances are there, Antoine Semenyo brought the deadlock with a classy finish in 10 minutes. Leon Bailey grabbed the equaliser, of the cracker off the right for Villa. Diego Carlos thought he put the visitors into the lead. Luca Dina straying offside according to VAR. Emi Martinez has made several cracking saves, but at the break, it is Bournemouth 1, Aston Villa 1. Liverpool 2, Fulham 2, Soboslai, chip cross into the penalty area. Simicast waiting, might fall for Nunez, deflected cross. Leno dives and grabs it in front of his goal line. It's a couple of times Nunez has gone down now, simulating, wanting a foul. Book him. I'm sorry, but you've got to take it out the game because if you don't, you'll continue to do it. And we don't want to see that. Yeah, couldn't agree more. May well feature on 6.06 tonight in the feature of the simulation game. Chris and Robbie taking the calls half six through until eight o'clock after our Manchester City Tottenham uh, commentary. Darwin Nunez definitely a contender. Alexis McAllister trying to bring the ball away for Liverpool has lost it. Andreas Pereira slightly miscues his pass out to Iwobi on the left. We've already played ten and a half minutes of added time at the end of the first half. Here's Pereira. Pereira running across the face of the Liverpool penalty area, plays it to Tete, now to Wilson, Wilson wide on the right, Pereira trying to turn, challenged by McAllister, clever from Tete, flag goes up as Reid plays the cross, Liverpool allowed to play the advantage, Salah calling for it wide on the right, Gravenberg running freely, crossing the halfway line right in the middle of the pitch, delays his pass eventually, oh, he's got enough on it to reach Salah and the opportunity is gone. Ball is knocked out of play, Ry Robinson for a Liverpool throw, Salah's throw doesn't reach Sobberslife, pull him intercept, just a few sloppy mistakes in this first half by Liverpool, and here's Harry Wilson on the ball for the visitors. Lofts his pass to the left, Iwobi takes it infield this time, plays back to Polinia, and eventually, after 56 and a half minutes of football, the first half draws to a close, Four goals in it, two absolute wonder strikes for Liverpool to take 1-0 and 2-1 leads. Alexander-Arnold uh, with the free kick. Alexis McAllister with an absolute stunner from 30 yards, one of the best goals you will ever see. But Fulham have managed to grab two goals of their own, Stephen Warner. Yeah, they have, and they fully deserve it. They fully deserve to be in this game. Um, you, you could have sulked when the goals went in against you because of the quality of them and you think well what do we have to do to, to get something out of this game but they've used the ball so so well when they've gone forward for them they have also used that left hand side the, the right back position of Trent Alexander-Arnold knowing that that's where the space is they've utilised that space Awobi's just stayed out and hugged that touchline and it's given them an outlet every single time but we've definitely got a game on our hands certainly do looking forward to the second half Harry Wilson and Kenny Tete the scorers for Fulham the first time they've scored two goals or more at Anfield since October 1966 Liverpool 2 Fulham 2 which has been the better goal Stephen Warner? Ooh uh, McAllister <sighs> I mean 
both absolutely. And I thought last week was the weekend of amazing goals in the Premier League. Yeah. The the technique, you can see the spin on the ball as it goes in. Which one? <laughs> yeah, good point, good point. Uh, honestly, <laughs> both of them are just brilliant in their own right, aren't they? I mean, uh, the free kick from Trent Alexander-Arnold, the speed in which he gets it up and over the wall, the spin on the ball, the curl on it to crash it off the bar, Leno outstanding goalkeeper nowhere near it and then McAllister's as it sits up often you'll think I'm not hitting it because we know it's going to go in Rosehead it's going to go over or we're just not going to catch it quite right we saw Gravenberch try one in this uh, later on in the half and he completely got it wrong but that strike was just beautiful from uh, Alexis McAllister so we've had two absolutely amazing goals we've also had one lovely storyline if you're a neutral or obviously a Fulham fan we heard from Harry Wilson before the game he was telling us about the sliding doors moment when Manchester United forgot to call him and he ended up going to the the Liverpool Academy that will have been very hard for him not to celebrate yeah it will but I, I'm, I'm, I, I understand it myself because I've been there where I scored against a, an old employee and you, you do feel a bit bit awkward but um, it was a lovely run from him off the back of Alexis McAllister he finds himself in space in the box and it's so instinctive that little toe poke between Callagher's legs it's a, it's a really good goal from Fulham and I think if we'd have seen it from Liverpool we would have all been waxing lyrical saying Oh, what about the ball that wide and the overlap and the, the running from uh, running from deep to get in the box take nothing away from it outstanding team goal from Fulham and two other quick things firstly VAR getting it right we've got to talk about it when it does things right as well Fulham would have been robbed of an important goal had it not been for VAR and Quivine Kelleher we had the VAR decision to deny Tim Ream a goal that would have put Fulham in front but that wouldn't have been needed without a great save no it wouldn't and um, Firstly, VAR, yeah, big pat on the back for them. They get that one correct. And uh, Kelleher doesn't really cover himself in too much glory with that one. But the second save from Palina is an outstanding save down to his right-hand side, but off the turf, pushing it uh, pushing it away to safety on rushing Ream is offside, which is uh, which is a real shame from Fulham, but from Kelleher's point of view, great save. Stephen Ali, thank you very much for the time being. Cheers, We've had Steve. 10 goals in our four two o'clock kickoffs in the Premier League. Bournemouth 1, Villa 1, Chelsea 2, Brighton 1, Liverpool 2, Fulham 2, West Ham 1, Crystal Palace. Now remember, all of them are live between 5 Live, 5 Sports Extra, the BBC Sport website and app. In the FA Cup, Eastley of the National League facing League 1 Reading. Let's check in there, Henry Moran. 20 minutes of the 90 remaining. Eastley 1, Reading 0. And Reading have just managed their first shot on target in the game. Sub Lewis Wing forcing a good save from goalkeeper Joe McDonnell. But Eastley deserved this lead. Could have been more, should have been more. Easily could have seen a hat trick for top scorer Paul McCallum. He got the opening goal, the only goal in the first half. Eastley, good value for the lead, but things just getting a little nervy here in Hampshire. 69 minutes gone. Eastley 1, Reading 0. Uh, right, we've got a lot to get through before the second half kicks off at Anfield, including our first trip to the Etihad today, Manchester City versus Tottenham Hotspur in full on Premier League Sunday at 4.30 today. So we'll go there and pretty much everywhere else after the news with Richard Foster. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thanks, Steve. Good afternoon. The former Labour Minister, Glenys Kinnock, has died at the age of 79. She was the wife of Neil Kinnock, a former MEP, and she worked in Gordon Brown's government. She'd had Alzheimer's disease since 2017. Our political reporter, Tony Bonsignori, has more. She was such a prominent political figure, both as the wife, the partner of the Labour leader, but also within her own right. Of the, you know, she was an active politician for nearly 20 years uh, until just around 16 or 17 years ago. The Israeli military has issued further evacuation warnings to Palestinians around the city of Khan Yunis in southern Gaza, which has been bombarded for a third day after a brief truce with Hamas. UN officials say the Israeli orders are difficult for civilians to follow. Israel wants to destroy Hamas after its deadly attacks on the 7th of October. Heavy snows left 2,500 people in Cumbria without electricity. Several roads, including the M6, have been blocked by abandoned vehicles. Our reporter Eunice Muller is in Coniston and says disruption there is continuing. The Electricity Northwest have said that they're doing their best to try and restore supplies, but access to the damaged network continues to prove difficult with a number of roads still treacherous. But I have seen drivers free their vehicles today after they were stuck. 
a number spent the night in their cars with limited water and limited amount of food. Well, it got as cold as minus 12 Celsius overnight. Yellow weather warnings for snow and ice are still in place for the northwest of England, the Midlands, the south and parts of Wales and Scotland. A man has been killed and two others injured in a knife and hammer attack on a street in central Paris. It happened near the Eiffel Tower last night. One of those injured is British. A 26-year-old French national who's known to security service services has been arrested. And the Home Office says more than 500 people crossed the Channel in 11 small boats yesterday, despite thick fog and the freezing temperatures. French authorities also also rescued 190 others who'd got into difficulties. BBC Five Live, the voice of sport. Coming up this week, there's midweek Premier League action on Five Live. Five Live. On Tuesday night at 8.15, Arsenal travel to Luton. Shut a slightly and rolls it into the bottom left-hand corner. On Wednesday night at 8.15, Aston Villa versus Manchester City. Haaland the score! Haaland scores! And on Thursday night at 7.30, Everton versus Newcastle. Gordon inside the penalty area. Shoots low! Five Live, the Premier League. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Steve Crossman. On Five Live, listen on BBC Sounds. It is a cracking day of live football, but much else going on besides. Let's find out if England have just steadied the ship after losing some quick wickets in the West Indies. Dan Norcross. Well, they sort of have. They're 146 for three at the start of the 23rd over, but it's been frenetic stuff. This is a very awkward pitch for batting on. It's very hard to find your timing. Zach Crawley's still there, but only just. He's 37 not out. He's been dropped twice. One an absolute sitter uh, long on by Moti. Another one at slip. So, look, it's, it's hard batting conditions out there in England are well ahead of the game they're going at a lovely rate but uh, you could see a clatter of wickets later on here and a par score of around 270, 280 is still some way off 146 for three halfway through the 23rd over Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, let's go next to the UK Snooker Championship final. It's the record seven times champion Ronnie O'Sullivan playing Ding Junhui. Normally, Jamie Broughton tells us what the target is for victory. Today at the York Barbican, it's the magic number, isn't it? It is. The magic number is 10. We've got eight frames in this session. We've played five of them so far. O'Sullivan made a fast start. He won the opening three frames. He knocked in two breaks of 71, plus a 91. Ding then responded. He knocked in an 89. O'Sullivan then took the next after Ding broke down. He pinched it on the colours to go 4-1 up. Ding's had another chance in this frame six. Broken down again. O'Sullivan's back at the table here. So 10, the magic number, Steve. I'll say it twice for your benefit. (laughs) Thank you. You say it many times as you won. Uh, That's Jamie Broughton. Remember, you can watch it on BBC Two, the UK Snooker Championship final this afternoon. We've had loads of drama in the first halves of our Premier League games, which kicked off at two o'clock. There's already been a bit at the start of the second half at the London Stadium. John Hunt. Yeah, West Ham thought they had just scored their second. Mohamed Kudas down the uh, right-hand side swung a ball in. Uh, in the middle of the area was Thomas Suchek, who swung at the ball but missed it. The ball flew into the net and they judged Suchek to be offside and interfering with play. So Kudas's celebrations were short-lived. We've got a delay in play here. Emerson's down getting treatment on what looks a nasty knock to his left leg. So still, West Ham won, Crystal Palace nil. We played four minutes of the second half. Already today in the Scottish Premiership, St Johnston were leading against Celtic by goal to nil at half-time. Celtic fought back, though. They won 3-1. Matt O'Reilly getting his seventh of the season. He's the joint top scorer in the division. That took them 11 points clear of Rangers, who now get their chance to respond. They're at home to St Mirren and we're just underway. Kenny Crawford. Yeah, Steve, six minutes gone here at Ibrox. Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. Three points is a must for Rangers this afternoon now that Celtic have stretched their lead to 11 points, as you say. Rangers still unbeaten in nine games under the guidance of Philippe Clement, but the last two games, draws at Aberdeen and then at home to Aris Limassol, have been less convincing, and Rangers fans want reassurance today. Five changes in, Balogun, Goldson, Lawrence, McCausland and Dessers for Rangers. Dessers had an early header that was comfortably saved by Zach Kemming. Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. Uh, thank you very much, Kenny. Uh, let's take you now into the FA Cup second round ties at the start of this year I was at the race course ground talking about the big underdogs the giant killers potentially in Wrexham fast forward 12 months and all of a sudden they're the giant they're at home to Yeovil Town and Sani Rudravagula is watching yes that's right Wrexham reached the fourth round last season but back to back promotions is probably the target for Phil Parkinson's side they're second in League 2 and how Yeovil would love to trade places with them they are top of the National League South but they were relegated to the sixth tier where the pair 
there met back here in April. Wrexham unchanged from a two-all draw at Harrogate. Mark Cooper's son, Charlie, is in for Yeovil. That's one of two changes from their 4-1 defeat at Welling. And both these sides have teamed up with supermarket sponsors. So you could call this the Colin versus Cuthbert Caterpillar Cake Derby. It's Wrexham wow. Yeovil, 3.45. I mean, all you could not, Sanny, but <laughs> each to their own, I yeah, say. I'm calling it that. There's a giant pepper pig to my left as well, like... 12 foot tall giant inflatable pepper pig so there you go wow ok thank you Sonny uh, so Wrexham against Yeovil Sonny will keep us up to date on that 4.30 today big game in the Premier League Manchester City versus Tottenham uh, at the Etihad that's where we find our senior football reporter Ian Dennis afternoon Ian hi Steve how are you yeah really good thank you and really looking forward to this because it yeah, could be anything it, yeah really looking forward to it I think the two managers the way that they like to play it's there's a sense of disappointment that Tottenham have got so many players missing because I'd, I'd love to see them come here full strength and to, to challenge Manchester City. But that said, I, I listened to Ange Postacoglu's press conference in the build-up to the game. He's not going to change his principles. Uh, so I, I, I think in that sense, um, to echo the words of Pep Guardiola, um, what did he say? To encourage all the supporters to come here, we're going to have lots of fun. Yeah, well, we should do. And... I imagine there'll be some Tottenham fans who are slightly scared of the fact that they're just going to play the way they want to play. But the rewards are there. You know, if Spurs can stick to their identity and get a result with the players they've got out, that could do so much for them. I think the Tottenham fans will just be excited that they've got a manager who buys mm -hmm. into their ethos of what the club is all about and the type of football that they like to see being played. You know, having suffered through the rather pragmatic approach of, uh, of previous recent managers, uh, I think even with this losing run that they're on, they're enjoying their football again. So they're going to travel here knowing that, yes, that it might be a daunting prospect, but they're going, to, they're going to enjoy the ride. And I think that was the most important thing that I took from Postacoglu's press conference, that he was saying that if you, if you look at the top clubs, they have a plan. Mm. You invest in it, uh, you believe in it, and you stick to it. And that's what Ange Postacoglu wants Tottenham Hotspur to become. And I think for that very reason... He, he will have every single Tottenham Hotspur supporter fully behind him with that approach. Yeah. Also, have Chelsea and Liverpool shown us before and after the latest international break that if you really are aggressive, Manchester City aren't perfect. You can have joy against them. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at Leipzig as well. Leipzig yes. went into a tuna lead here in the Champions League in midweek. Um, but, you know, they, they are they are a, a, a tough prospect, particularly here, here at the Etihad. You know, they've, uh, they're, they're unbeaten in, in, in 2023. They've won 24 of those 25 games. So yeah, they are a, a tough prospect. But I think, as Postacoglu said, it's a little bit like a damn wall. If you come here trying to, to shut up shop, eventually Manchester City, and I've certainly said it many times in a commentary, they always seem to find a way. But if you then go and attack them, then all of a sudden you give them some problems to think about. And Pep Guardiola was certainly fulsome of his praise of Postacoglu when they came across each other, albeit in a pre-season friendly. Uh, and Yokohama at the time when Postacoglu was in charge mm. was uh, obviously they were in season and Manchester City was still getting to grips at that stage, but it was still an entertaining fixture should be an absolute belter we'll keep our fingers crossed thank you Ian that's Ian Dennis who'll be alongside Dion Dublin for full commentary from the Etihad of Manchester City versus Tottenham at 4.30 we're almost ready for the second half at Anfield but we've had a goal at the London Stadium John Hunt equaliser for Crystal Palace West Ham 1 Crystal Palace 1 and this is not one that Konstantinos Mavropanos will want to see again for West Ham under no pressure inexplicably he played the ball back directly into the path of Odson Edouard who finished calmly for Palace nightmare for Mavropanos and West Ham West Ham 1 Palace 1 ball on the centre spot at Anfield more of the same please Ali Bruce Ball well we'll do our best uh, it's all, almost quarter past three isn't it the game kicked off at two o'clock and the second half is just about to get underway long first half played here at Anfield four goals in it Liverpool 2 Fulham 2 Liverpool out, Fulham out, Fulham in the uh, white shirts, black sleeves, black shorts and white socks, defending the goal with the cop behind it away to our right and Liverpool all in red in this second half playing towards the cop, so if you know your Anfield that is playing from left to right as we look at it from high up in the main stand. Uh, Liverpool have Kelleher in goal, Alexander-Arnold, Matip, Van Dijk and Simikas, Soboslai, McAllister, Gravenberg, Salah and Diaz, uh, either side of Darwin Nunez, Joel Matip is on the ball for Liverpool, plays it across to Van Dijk. Van Dijk quickly looks to his right and his left, eventually decides to 
play the ball to the left and there's McAllister McAllister to uh, to Matip Matip thinks about a pass forward and comes back to his goalkeeper Quivine Keller do you think Jurgen Klopp might have thought about half-time change at all Stephen? I think if, if it was going to be a change anywhere on the pitch it would have been Gakpo for Nunez I don't think he's been at his best at all today he's really struggled to get into the game I think when you often see the best of Darwin Nunez it's when teams play high up the pitch and he's got that ability to run in behind when he's when it's a, a low block and teams are sat in he finds it very difficult to find space free kick coming against Luis Diaz for a tug in midfield Fulham have burnt Leno in goal Kenny Tete Calvin Bassi Tim Ream and Anthony Robinson there back for great return to the starting lineup for Kenny Tete today scorer of the second goal Harrison Reed and Joao Polina in front of the back four Iwobi Pereira and Wilson on his return to Anfield uh, the former Liverpool man scorer of the first goal with Raul Jimenez up front Graven Burke gives one for Nunez to chase Nunez up against Bassi Bassi just manages to hold Nunez off but do it Diaz gets to the loose ball no offside flag goes up so Fulham will have a free kick Nunez looks perplexed Liverpool fans frustrated and Fulham will take their time over playing the ball downfield so Chelsea lead Brighton 2-1 commentary on that one over on Radio 5 Sports Extra Bournemouth 1, Villa 1 and Palace have equalised early in the second half away at West Ham uh, commentaries on Bournemouth, Villa and West Ham Palace are available via the BBC Sport website uh, and app Odson Edward, the goal scorer uh, for Palace with the equaliser who I know for a fact is coming off Chris Sutton's bench in his fantasy football team so he's going to be getting himself those points uh, which is all a little bit annoying here's Gravenberg for Liverpool playing the ball to Alexander-Arnold Alexander-Arnold moving at speed looking to play one through the middle to Salah doesn't find him now Liverpool slightly out of position as Fulham bring it forward down the left Iwobi suddenly has two red shirts in front of him McAllister makes the tackle throw him for Fulham yeah that's where Fulham have been really really positive leaving that Iwobi in that left hand position to capitalise when Trent Alexander-Arnold goes for but Alexis McAllister on the cover this time thwarts the danger Sobosly the Hungarian playing a ball into the heart of the Liverpool midfield Fulham win the loose ball Reed feeds Tete Tete running forward 25 yards out now up to the edge of the penalty area Wilson's there in support plays it to Wilson Wilson thinks about it then outside of his left foot looking for the runner Pereira slides can't keep that ball in just ran over the dead ball line it'll be a goal kick for Liverpool a little bit wasteful from Harry Wilson there. Good opportunity for him to find Pereira in the box. It wasn't that difficult of a, of a pass. But again, credit to Fulham. They use the ball exceptionally well when they go forward. So calm on the ball in those advanced positions. Stockport 2-1 up away at Aldershot in the FA Cup second round. Another goal at Bournemouth though, Aaron Paul. Bournemouth 2, Aston Villa 1. This is a, is a bit of class from the home side. Milos Kerkes with the ball in from the left on the ground. Dominic Solanke bringing it into feet. Back to goal, pirouetting and just guiding the ball past Emi Martinez. Classy finish, Bournemouth 2, Aston Villa 1. Here come Liverpool then, Liverpool 2, Fulham 2, Bournemouth in front against Villa, Villa starting the day, fourth spot in this Premier League table, Liverpool just ahead of them in third, ahead of them only on goal difference and at the moment Villa being beaten, Liverpool being held, Sobosly back to goal, plays the ball into the path of Alexander-Arnold, just runs out of space, Tim Ream side foots a pass away to the left towards Iwobi, chased by Sobosly towards the halfway line, lobs one back to Anthony Robinson sweeps it across to Ream his fellow American now Polinia the Portuguese turns in the midfield for Fulham gets away from Darwin Nunez and then just chips a ball cheekily over the head of Luis Diaz and Diaz says I'm not having that I'm going to go and get that ball and goes racing away and try and put pressure on Tete Tete was he tripped by McAllister he went down another one to go down very theatrically there referee's not buying it good for him and Liverpool bring the ball up to the halfway line Here's Gravenberg. Gravenberg holds off Tete. The ball runs to Luis Diaz in central midfield. Jimenez with a good challenge. McAllister in with the next tackle. And the ball will go out for a Liverpool throw. Big goal in the FA Cup. Eastley against Reading. Henry Moran. Equaliser for Reading with less than five minutes of the 90 remaining. Femi Aziz with a rocket from distance. It's Eastley 1, Reading 1. 
Right, as you can hear, the Liverpool fans recognise their team, need them, and maybe Darwin Nunez can help them. His shot's deflected and behind for a corner. It's Liverpool 2, Fulham 2, and Calvin Bassey has picked up a knock in doing the defending. Well, he does really well, Bassey, because he tracks Darwin Nunez all the way, doesn't dive in, just gets himself in between the line of the ball and the goal. And as Darwin Nunez pulls back the right foot to shoot at goal, he's in the way to block the shot. Liverpool with a corner. Manchester City Tottenham to come in full from half four in Dennis and Dion Dublin with that commentary 6.06 after that from 6.30 until 8 and if you're a fan of the NFL uh, coverage tonight as ever on Radio 5 Sports Extra the 49ers at the Eagles as Alexander Arnold takes the corner towards the far post Jimenez flicks a header back behind him Salah collects it plays it back to Sobersly swerving shot wide low but misses the right hand post and goes behind for a goal kick uh, just sets himself nicely with his first touch and that's what he was trying to achieve when the ball was played back to him by Mohamed Salah. Tries to just cut across the ball and catch out Bert Leno in his near post and I think Leno had it covered, had it been on target, but that's a worrying sign for, for Fulham. You cannot allow a player of his ability that time and space on the edge of the box. You can see that Hibbs have taken the lead against Aberdeen in the Scottish Premiership. That's a three o'clock kickoff. Rangers St Mirren remains goalless. Celtic 3-1 winners away at St Johnston in the earlier kickoff today. Sobberslight again, 25 yards out, low drive. Leno saves, spills it and Salah nearly onto the rebound, but Leno is able to pick himself up and grab it just in time. Stamford Bridge, John Southall. Chelsea 2, Brighton 1. You don't see this very often. They're making a quadruple change here, Brighton. Gross, Matoma, Pedro and Milner coming on. And I think the manager is just sensing blood here. They're on top at the moment, Brighton, but they trail Chelsea by two goals to one. Quadruple change. That's very Roberto De Zerbi. Yeah. Uh, Bassi's ball forward up towards Wilson. Harrison Reed involved. Plays it to Pereira. Fulham sensing they've got an opportunity in Anfield this afternoon as well. Been here 36 times in their history. Only won twice. Tete's cross into the far post. Alexander Arnold heads it away. Stretching his sober slide. Gets a crucial touch. Liverpool suddenly coming on the counter. Salah with the ball at his feet. Speeding forward. Nunez in space on the right. Salah tries to roll him in. Nunez hits the bar and the ball comes back out of the Fulham penalty area and falls at the feet of Harry Wilson. A oh, brilliant counter-attack from Liverpool and perfect time and weight of pass from Mohamed Salah. But just down in the technical area, Silva's going ballistic at his midfield for diving in on the first challenge of Liverpool, allowing Mohamed Salah to drive at them. They were trying to get back in. Credit to Tim Ream, he just does enough to get close enough to put off Darwin Nunez, who crashes it against the bar. This has been a great game of oh. football, it really has. I mean, we were lucky in midweek, weren't we? But we've got another game here. Well, I was sitting watching Tottenham Villa last Sunday as well, which is a five live commentary, Stephen, which is another end-to-end -end thriller. This is definitely one here. As Stephen says, we had Galatasaray 3, Manchester United 3 in midweek, and loads of Premier League football coming your way in the week across the network as well. Tuesday night, we're at Luton. Full commentary on Luton Arsenal, which kicks off at 8.15. Wednesday night, two Premier League commentaries. Villa Manchester City also kicks off at 8.15. That's on Five Live. Manchester United Chelsea on Sports Extra as Liverpool come again with Trent Alexander-Arnold. Salah could be in here, just gets away from him and Leno's off his line quickly and side foots it away with his right foot. McAllister heads it forward to Sobersly. Back to McAllister, barge off it. Good challenge by Pereira. It's end-to-end -end stuff at Anfield as Iwobi gets away down the left. The crowd really involved now as well. Reed ducks under the pass. He didn't think it was meant for him. Space is opening up again. Liverpool pouring through Fulham's midfield because Fulham's midfield is non-existent again. Here's Luis Diaz, gets it from Simicas. Angled run, curling effort, poor one. Straight at Burnt Leno. Take a breath, everyone. Yeah, wrong decision from Luis Diaz as he just tries to step inside and bend it into that far top corner, but there's no power, no pace on the, on the, uh, on the shot from Luis Diaz. But this is just turning into a basketball game now. Liverpool 2, Fulham 2. Leno's clearance on the volley with his right foot. Jimenez attacks it from the right. Van Dijk heads it out for a throw. How's West Ham Palace looking, John Hunt? West Ham should have been ahead. 65 gone. It's 1-1 still. But Pakatar has just found Emerson all alone. Six yard out. And Emerson blazed it over the bar. West Ham 1, Palace 1. Chelsea leading Brighton by two goals to one. Bournemouth leading Villa by two goals to one. Thursday night, we're back on Merseyside. 7.30 kickoff, full commentary of Everton, Newcastle. 8.15, we've got Tottenham, West Ham. That game will start on Sports Extra and then switch to five live for the second half. 
Liverpool 2, Fulham 2, getting darker, colder and wetter here uh, at Anfield. Reed's ball down the right. Van Dijk steps in and intercepts. Played high up towards Nunez, headed away by Reed, flicked on by Palinia. Van Dijk brings the ball down on his chest, lobs it to Simakas. Awkward one for him to deal with. Van Dijk under pressure, played back to him by Simakas. Doesn't like the challenge from Raul Jimenez, complains that Jimenez came in high on him. And the ball has gone out, took a touch on the way through for a Liverpool throw. It's been a great battle between Jimenez and uh, Van Dijk. I know everyone talks about Jimenez's goal record and the lack of goals, but what he's brought to Fulham today has been really, really positive. Struggled to get into the game in the first 10 or 15 minutes, but after that, he's had a big impact on the game. You remember him, actually, when, when he first came to the Premier League for Wolves in that Nuno team. He scored 30 goals in his first two seasons uh, for Wolves. I remember at the time people were talking about move to Manchester United or, or wherever, and then the horrible head injury came at Arsenal, but he's out there now doing it at Anfield for Fulham. Sobosly gets away from Iwobi. Graven Burke in space on the left-hand side in the Fulham box, looking for the cross, trying to pick out Diaz, could never get it through a wall of white shirts. There's Jimenez again, racing to the ball, trying to get a touch on it to find Iwobi. Didn't get enough on it. Here's Van Dijk. Gripping game to watch this at the moment. And it remains 2-2 between Liverpool and Fulham. This will suit Fulham, though. They just sit deep invite that pressure and then try to counter-attack from Liverpool it's just trying to have that quality on the final ball as Gravenbert there on the left-hand side should have picked a better pass into the box 12 minutes gone in the second half Van Dijk stroking a ball forward to Luis Diaz Luis Diaz running into the heart of midfield Salah coming in from the right pass half intercepted comes back to Alexander-Arnold great vision and execution of the pass as always from the Liverpool man finds Simicast Simicast Back to Gravenberg. Gravenberg low ball. Hits Salah on the heels. Diaz on the turn. Deflected shot. Easy save for Leno again. Well, you just feel that Liverpool have got into the groove again. They had it in the first 10 or 15 minutes of the first half. Now they're starting to get it again. Starting to win the second balls in midfield. Then they're winning the battles up top as well. They're retaining the ball and they're playing them lovely little one-twos and intricate football that we know they can play. Looks like a late winner for Norwich at Ashton Gate. Bristol City 1, Norwich 2. Adam Eder has scored in the 95th minute of the game. Robinson just challenged slightly late by Salah there. Play continues. Fulham have it inside their own half. Brilliant from Iwobi to take it through Alexander-Arnold. Now Andreas Pereira running across the heart of the midfield from left to right. Here's Andreas Pereira, still ball at his feet, trying to tee himself up for the shot. Eventually hits it high and wide, and that is a goal kick for Liverpool. Now this is going to be a crucial goal in the FA Cup. Late one in the game between Eastleigh and Reading. Henry Moran. In the 94th minute, Eastleigh have surely won it and it's that man, Paul McCallum again, bundling home after a corner. Reading supporters can't believe it. Eastleigh winning in injury time. Eastleigh 2, Reading 1. So if they do go on to win it, there cannot be long left. Away to Newport or Barnet in the third round of the FA Cup for Eastleigh. Palinia hauled to the floor by Luis Diaz as he was getting away down the right. That will be a free kick for Fulham. He's been brilliant. Really, really impressed with Paulinho. Every time I've seen him, I thought he was outstanding away at Arsenal. Here again, taking the pressure off his team, driving with the ball, wants it under pressure, not afraid to, to try things as well. Coming up to the hour mark here at Anfield, Liverpool might be thinking about a couple of changes. Jurgen Klopp in discussions about that at the moment. Penalty at Stamford Bridge, John Southall. And a penalty to Chelsea. They lead Brighton by two goals to one. And it's Enzo Fernandez who scored the opening goal of the afternoon, who will take it. There's a long, long VAR check. Mudrick into the area, just nudged off the ball by James Milner. Porton went to the screen, took a long time to give it. And now he's going to go and have a word with Jason Steele, who's taking his time in his all-orange in the Brighton goal, who trailed by two goals to one. Remember, Chelsea down to ten men after Gallagher was sent off just before half-time. He's being made to wait for this one. Enzo Fernandez in front of the Matthew Harding stand. And this could be a key moment of the game. The Argentinian just backs up to the edge of the penalty area, scored his first league goal for the club in the first half, and now has the chance to give Chelsea a 3-1 potentially decisive lead in the game, steps up on his right foot and scores down the middle, Chelsea 3, Brighton 1. 
Thank you, John. Commentary continues on Radio 5 Sports Extra. The oohs and the ahs you heard in the background there came from Anfield, not Darwin Nunez's afternoon. Brilliant pitch-length move from Liverpool. Really clever header from Mo Salah to tee it up for Nunez, eight yards out, and he scuffed it with his left foot. No, it's a sitter. It really is a sitter. It's a really poor miss from Darwin Nunez. Great play by Zobazlai and Mohamed Salah. Death of touches from Mohamed Salah into the path of Nunez and he's six yards out and he just miss hits the ball completely should be 3-2 Liverpool half an hour remaining Liverpool 2 Fulham 2 thrilling attacking game Simicass on the move for Liverpool down the left referee spotted what did he see there Stephen it's a throw in one oh, out oh one out of play yeah. throw in throw in for Fulham in the middle of their own half on the right and they are the ones who are going to make the changes first actually double change coming Willian and Tom Kearney uh, are coming on Harry Wilson uh, will come off for Fulham so Wilson was in for William in the starting lineup today William's just gone over and received a handshake from Jurgen Klopp those two will have uh, crossed paths before so he's coming on for Harry Wilson Tom Kearney waiting to come on too and while we wait for Fulham to make the changes let's take you back to Bournemouth Aaron Paul Bournemouth to Aston Villa on the home side hunting for a third and going very very close Tavernier breaking down the right at breakneck speed got to the byline played the ball into the near post Dom Solanke unmarked fired the ball into the body of the sprawling Emmy Martinez and the goalkeeper's face to his defence afterwards just said it all Bournemouth 2 Aston Villa 1 uh, Joe Gomez is waiting to come on for Liverpool. Fulham have made their changes. Full time at Eastley. Henry Moran. Eastley 2, Reading 1. The National League side beating the League 1 strugglers to reach the third round for the first time. Femi Aziz's late equaliser looked to have salvaged the day for Reading. But Paul McCallum, two goals on the day. One in the fourth minute of added time. Winning it for Eastley. Eastley 2, Reading 1. It's going to be a double change for Liverpool too here as well. Gomez and Gakpo, the two Gs, waiting to come on for the home team. Willian. Scored the two penalties for Fulham in the win against Wolves on Monday night. He's into the action. Plays it to Robinson. Robinson goes chasing down the left. Ball breaks loose inside the Liverpool penalty area. McAllister clears only as far as Willian takes on McAllister. McAllister makes a really important tackle just inside that Liverpool penalty area. Sliding challenge on Sobosly from Polinia. Liverpool get the free kick. Polinia says he's taken the ball. He's worried he might get a yellow card. It will be a Liverpool free kick. Uh, when I saw it straight away, I thought he's got a touch on the ball, but he feels the referee just feels there's probably a little bit too more force in the channel challenge. I'm just looking at the substitution here from Liverpool and wondering whether it'll be Joe Gomez going into right back and will that mean Trent Alexander Arnold pushing into midfield? Or will that mean a change of formation? It'll be very interesting to see what Jurgen Klopp does. I think the Gapo one should speak for itself. It should be Darwin Nunez and Gapo coming on for him. Really interesting second half Salah's cross with the outside of his left foot headed away by Reed. Salah again on the right nods it to Alexander-Arnold flicks the ball into the Fulham box header won by Soboslai Salah can't control it comes back to Alexander-Arnold on the right swinging cross with his left foot couple of deflections there last one off Darwin Nunez just stuck a foot out came off his boot and goes behind for a goal kick uh, to Fulham West Indies England in the one day international in Antigua Dan Norcross Horrible mix up, and it's Zach Crawley who's out. Run out for 48. He's batting, well, not exactly fluently. It's pretty tough batting conditions out there, but he was making his way to our half century and then went for a single. Brooke sent him back. He stood no chance. He was run out by about two thirds the length of the pitch. He's gone for 48 off 63. England 181 for four, halfway through the 30th over. Right, changes for Liverpool. The two Gs uh, are on in Gakpo and Gomez. Sobosly and McAllister come off Stephen Warnock yeah so Trent Alexander-Arnold drops into that midfield position and it looks like Liverpool are going with a, a 4-2-3-1 system now with uh, Diaz Gakpo and Salah in behind Darwin Nunes so it's apparent that Jurgen Klopp wants to go after this game yeah. and get the victory 25 minutes to go Chelsea leading Brighton by three goals to one Enzo Fernandez has got two there Bournemouth leading Villa by two goals to one it's still West Ham one Palace won at the London Stadium. Simicas flying into a challenge. Thumps the ball left-footed down the left-hand touchline. Darwin Nunez giving it everything to try and catch it. And Bernd Leno is just able to let it trickle over the dead ball line and go behind for a goal kick. And Darwin Nunez is dribbling the ball to the edge of the six-yard box, encouraging Fulham to get on with it. Full commentary, Manchester City, Tottenham to come. Uh, Ian Dennis has the team news. 
Ali, three changes for Manchester City from the side that came from behind to beat Leipzig. Edison is back in goal instead of Ortega. Alvarez and Doco return to the starting lineup at the expense of Lewis and Grealish. As for Tottenham, they make one alteration. Basuma back from a band to replace the injured Bentancur. Richarlison is amongst the substitutes. Dion Dublin alongside Ian for the commentary this afternoon. Kick off at half four, followed by 6.06 on Five Live and BBC Sounds tonight. Liverpool 2, Fulham 2. Stephen Warnock here at Anfield with us watching this one. Virgil van Dijk on the ball. Eastley through to the FA Cup third round. They'll face Newport or Barnet uh, in January. Here's Alexander-Arnold, centre circle, now playing in central midfield for Liverpool. Takes his time, rolls the ball to Matip on his right-hand side. Fulham just back off, and here's Cody Gakpo's first couple of touches. Finds Nunez, now the ball's chipped in towards Gakpo from Salah. Ream intercepts, Salah tries to walk in and take it back off him, but Fulham able to play out to Kearney on the left. Good feet from him, back to Robinson, floated pass down the line. Matip beats Willian to the ball, Matip is hurt, trodden on by Willian think he's going to be okay to hobble back into the action and Liverpool will keep playing and move the ball over to the left-hand side of the field to Luis Diaz Diaz moving in from the left trying to fire a pass quickly across to Salah intercepted by Anthony Robinson William just flicks it to Polinia forward to Harrison Reed now Matip is struggling Matip's down now he's stopped playing the game hasn't stopped though and Fulham eventually have stopped the ball Calvin Bassey has just floated a pass away to the right so that Joel Matip can receive treatment. Liverpool 2, Fulham 2. Yeah, he tried to come on about three or four times and Jurgen Klopp's having a pop at him here to say, why didn't you just go down straight away because it would have stopped the attack. Uh, he, he just landed awkwardly as he went to close down a player on the right-hand side. So uh, worrying times and Canate is already stripped and looking to come on. Uh, what's going on at Ibrox this afternoon? Three o'clock kickoff between Rangers and St Mirren. Kenny Crawford. 34 minutes gone, Ali. Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. Not yet the emphatic, reassuring performance the home fans want. There's been half chances for John Lundstrom, a half volley, and Abdallah Sima on loan from Brighton. His header went over, but as Rangers try and claw back that 11 point deficit they have over first place Celtic, um, it's not yet what the home fans are looking for. It's Rangers nil, St Mirren nil. Okay, can Chesterfield join Eastley in the FA Cup third round draw? Uh, Chris Coles. They are 15 minutes away from doing so. Still leading Leighton Orient of League One by one goal to nil. Chesterfield still have a measure of control in this game. They look more likely to get a second rather than a Leighton Orient equaliser. 15 minutes to play, Chesterfield one, Leighton Orient nil. Joel Matip hobbles off slowly. Ibrahim Kanate uh, on for Liverpool to play alongside Virgil van Dijk. And of course, Chesterfield are in the third round draw. We've had the third round draw playing for a place in the third round uh, itself and those ties Friday the 5th to Monday the 8th of January uh, you can be sure we'll be across it all here on 5 Live and BBC Sounds so we've got a quarter of this game still to go anyone's game at the moment Liverpool 2 Fulham 2 Fulham going to start trying to play out from the back Leno whose head is still bandaged after the knock he took early in the game from Luis Diaz, who was hurtling in to try and win a rebound. A little bit of a risk taken by Calvin Bassey on the edge of the box, but a back heel got him away from Gakpo. Jimenez chests the ball down. Again, Van Dijk in so quickly on Jimenez to win the ball for Liverpool. Alexander-Arnold towards Nunez, able to turn on the edge of the box, lays it out to the right to Salah. First time cross, slight deflection to the far post, and the header is just wide. Really difficult one, actually, for Luis Diaz to direct on target, and he couldn't quite do. It. Yeah, Stuart Atwell just saying to Kenny Tete as well, it would have been a foul had it have gone in because he just leaned on the back of Kenny Tete. Luis Diaz gives him a little bit of a shove, knocks him off balance and wins the header. Atwell says it would have been a foul. Just wondering, with Harry Wilson having scored for Fulham today, I'm watching Harvey Elliott warm up for Liverpool as a former Fulham man. Just wonder sometimes whether, you know, headlines are a pre-written ahead of games that's a possibility Liverpool 2 Fulham 2 here's Gakpo in his yellow boots not enough on the pass to Salah on the right Anthony Robinson tries to speed past Salah who sticks with him and just slows him down enough to make him pass the ball in field he's done so well today Anthony Robinson at doing that and nicking in in front of Salah because he knows what the danger is of Salah he knows if Salah gets him in a 1v1 and backs him up he's going to be in trouble so he's just he's just nullified at every single opportunity he can Chelsea leading Brighton 3-1 Bournemouth 2 Villa 1 West Ham 1 Palace 1 and this is Liverpool 2 Fulham 2 Jimenez down hurt now for Fulham 
play continues. Long ball to the left. Diaz has Tete breathing down his neck, trying to hold him off. Liverpool fans think those attentions are a little too close for comfort. Diaz manages to find Gravenberg. Gravenberg, effort from him, skidding straight into the arms of Bernd Leno. Yeah, wrong decision from Gravenberg because Cody Gakpo made a lovely run in behind Calvin Bassi and Bassi had been drawn towards the ball. A little slide pass would have allowed Gakpo perhaps a shot at goal or a pass across the box to a, to a teammate. Here yeah, can pull him again. Yeah, slightly awkward defending from Joe Waste. Gomez. Raul Jimenez has overhit a ball down the middle. Oh, Keller has miscued the clearance on the left foot. Alexander Arnold is there first for Liverpool. Volley pass back to Canate. Good ball. Releases Nunez. Looking for Salah on the right. Robinson's there again. Not quite enough on the pass from Nunez. But as you were just saying, Stephen, just admiring a sort of fellow left back in full flow. Robinson's been in the right place at the right time every single time. Yeah, really good awareness then of where the pass might go. Anticipating it. That's one of the skills that he's got in abundance, along with that pace that he possesses. Gravenberg to Salah. Salah back to Gomez. And back to the halfway line. And Canate. Canate to Van Dyke. A lot of space for Simicas over on the left. So Van Dyke wastes no time in getting it to him. Little one two between Simicas and Diaz. And we're into the last 20 minutes of the game. And Anfield falls silent again for a second Canate and Van Dijk exchanging passes just 10 yards inside the Fulham half Luis Diaz involved again back it comes to Canate they're just moving this Fulham defensive effort from side to side Joe Gomez looks up and thinks about one through the middle decides against it Alexander-Arnold has dropped deep takes the ball off him Canate with the diagonal ball bounces in front of Simicas one touch and then the cross is high and lofted towards the back post Nunez tries to head it down Good contact on the ball. Kenny, little back pass between Liverpool players inside his own penalty area. Gets away with it. Ring clears. Clever ball from Willian into Kenny. Kenny quickly forward. If Jimenez wins the flick on here, which he has, Iwobi's in space on the right hand side. Harrison Reed bombing up on the outside. Iwobi's seen it. Here's Harrison Reed on the right. Cross comes in. Oh, miscued by Canati, and it just comes off his shins and runs back to Kelleher. And Kelleher immediately gets it out to Salah. Fulham waiting to make another double change, but Liverpool come pouring forward. With Gakpo, Gakpo. Now Salah might be able to get in on the right-hand side. Leno off his line quickly, comes sliding out and grabs the ball at Salah's feet. End to end, really wasteful at the top end of the pitch. Liverpool there, Harrison Reed for Fulham at the opposite end, just fizzes a ball across. And Canate is very, very lucky as he doesn't know what's round him, just ricochets into the path of Kelleher. Who's going to score the next goal? Liverpool two, Fulham two. Here on Five Live. Available on the BBC Sounds app, so you can take us with you wherever you go. We'll keep you updated on all the other games as well. What's going on at Bournemouth, Aaron Paul? Bournemouth 2, Aston Villa 1, sub John Duran has gone closest to finding an equaliser for Villa. Just inside the D, had a snapshot towards goal. Neto flat-footed in between the sticks. It hit the post and bounced away. Relief for Bournemouth. They still lead Aston Villa by two goals to one. Mo Salah cross into that full and penalty area. Cut out at the near post by Joao Polinia. Little scoop pass from Kearney to Willian. Willian just inside his own half. Switch pass from him. Kearney's chasing hard down the left. Canate's got it covered. The two slide in on each other. The ball's not out of play just yet. And Canate eventually wins the throw for Liverpool in their right-back position. So two more coming on for Fulham. Timothy Castagna will be one of them. And Bobby Decadova reed will be the other West Ham Palace being watched by John Hunt. Just five minutes left and it's still West Ham 1, Crystal Palace 1. And to be honest, since that big chance for Emerson on the hour, we've not really had another chance. Lots of scrapping on the pitch in the middle of the park. Territory important, but are West Ham going to pay for that Mavropanos error that presented that equaliser to Odson Edouard? It's still West Ham 1, Crystal Palace 1. Five to go. Uh, what about events at Stamford Bridge, John Southall? Well, 11 minutes left to play, Ali. It's still Chelsea 3, Brighton 1. Chelsea down to 10 men at the moment. Look reasonably comfortable. But here come Brighton down the left-hand side. Milner with the crossover. Dingo with the volley just over the crossbar wide. It's not over this one yet. Chelsea lead by three goals to one. Commentary continues on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Bournemouth, Villa, West Ham, Palace, both available as commentaries uh, via the BBC Sport website and at Manchester City Tottenham in full to come here. Uh, on Five Live for you this afternoon and then Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage will take your calls uh, on 6.06 from half six 
through until 8 o'clock and Fulham fans may well want their say if this turns out to be a famous result for them at Anfield on their long journey back down south this Sunday evening. Uh, how long have we got left? We've got 15 minutes to play plus added time. Very long first half in this game after the injury to Bernd Leno, who thankfully is OK, still out there for Fulham, all in green, defending that goal away to our right. Here's Gakpo. Gakpo plays back to Van Dijk. Van Dijk at walking pace at the moment, skips forward, plays his pass to Simikas. Simikas back to Van Dijk, across the halfway line to Canate. Canate looks up and sees Joe Gomez in support on the right. And Gomez finds Salah and Salah decides nothing on here wide on the right, so I'm going to come all the way back to Kelleher. Kelleher gives it back to Van Dijk. Van Dijk goes for the lofted ball down the left. Well read and headed away by Castagna. And the ball goes out for a throw into Liverpool, taken by Simikas. Simikas gets it back from Alexander-Arnold. Here's Van Dijk on the ball again. Ten yards inside his own half. Across to Canate. Mo Salah just drifts back into space on the right. Longer ball over the top, just over the head of Luis Diaz. He chases hard, slides to catch it. Does stop it going over the dead ball line, but can only knock it out for a throw-in to Fulham. Stephen Warner. Marco Silva will be delighted with that. A long ball through the middle, not really too difficult to deal with. The organisation and the, the formation of Fulham has been really, really positive this game. They've been hard to play through. The fullbacks have defended against Liverpool's wing as well. And they've got a little bit of a problem here. Harrison Reed's just gone down on his knees. Just wonder what he's picked up there. Yeah. Liverpool fans aren't buying it, as you can hear. They know that time is running out for their team. And then Harrison Reed immediately goes sprinting to receive the ball for Fulham. So he gets a little bit more stick from the Liverpool fans. The ball's gone out for another throw-in to Fulham on the right. Tight title race at the moment. Arsenal top after their win yesterday on 33 points, which is why the home win is so crucial for Liverpool. Six out of six they've won at home in the Premier League this season. Ten out of ten in all competitions, but at the moment... They are not winning this one. Could be in danger of losing it as well if Fulham can turn this counter-attack into something. Willian controls the ball. Anthony Robinson steaming past him, hits the shot. Kelleher saves low to his left. Oh, I'm not so sure it was a shot. I think it was just trying to fit it across the, the six-yard box, but he just got a little bit too, on it, too much on it, Anthony Robinson. And just to say that Anthony Robinson, who was the attacking player, is now back into that yeah. left-back position. That's the work rate that Fulham have put in today. Mo Salah now in a central position. Joe Gomez crossing from the right. Not a good cross. Takes a deflection. It might come back to Gomez here. Controls it just outside the Fulham penalty area. Moves away from Willian and then plays the ball back to Van Dijk in the centre circle. Liverpool probing and prodding at this Fulham defence. Liverpool 2, Fulham 2. Van Dijk controls again inside the centre circle to Canate. Canate to Gravenberg. Gravenberg wide on the right for Liverpool at the moment. Nunez in the middle. Luis Diaz fairly central as well. So is Cody Gakpo. There's certainly the attacking numbers out there for them. They've scored two wonder strikes today as well. You have to check those out on match of the day two tonight. Half past ten, BBC One. Here's Gakpo. Edge of the D. Just taking too long trying to lay it back to Alexander-Arnold. Bumped to the floor. Wants a free kick and doesn't get it. Fulham clear. Liverpool come at them again. Canate doesn't put enough on the pass and Robinson is in like a shot to win it. And then moving at speed again down the left-hand side. William behind him gives him a shout. William receives it. There's Kearney. William plays back to Tim Ream, the Fulham captain. 36 years old, the uh, American centre-back. Back to his goalkeeper Leno across to Bassey. Harrison Reed to Leno again. Enough on the pass for Leno to clear under no real pressure. Canate volleys it forward. Alexander-Arnold is challenged. He's gone down and stayed down briefly. Liverpool have it. Gravenberg trying to find Nunez through the middle with Luis Diaz in space on the left. You can hear the howls of frustration uh, all around us. Now Kearney on the ball for Fulham. Deep into Liverpool territory. Support on the outside from Decadova Reed. First time cross over hit. But it will find Willian wide on the left. Laser pass into the penalty area. Good touch from Kearney. Cross to the far post. Attacked and headed in by Bobby Decadova Reed. Anfield is stunned. A brilliantly worked goal by Fulham. And incredibly, they lead Liverpool by three goals to two. Yeah, big mistake by Ryan Gravenberg. And it's been punished by Fulham and punished by the substitutes and great work by 
Tom Kearney down the left hand side he just stands a delicious ball up to the back post Simicus is beaten by De Cordova Reed at the back post who bullets a header down into the ground past Kelleher and Fulham lead 3-2 last team to win a league game at Anfield as Stephen said at the start of the commentary was Leeds back in October 2022 Liverpool's only defeat in their last 48 league games at Anfield time is running out today and Fulham lead them by three goals to two meanwhile there's been a goal at Ibrox Kenny Crawford it's taken 45 minutes Ali but Rangers finally have the lead over St Mirren it's Rangers 1 St Mirren 0 the goal scorer Abdallah Sima on loan from Brighton his 10th goal of the season really a, a assured finish from about 10, 12 yards. Good work down the right hand hand side by Cyril Dessers and then Todd Cantwell who teed up Sima to slam the ball home. And that's the half time whistle. Rangers won, St Mirren nil. So 10 minutes remaining in the game at Anfield. What a potential story we have on our hands here. Liverpool with the unblemished home record in all competitions so far this season and Fulham having only won twice at Anfield before today in their history in 36 games here. Liverpool immediately on the attack from the kickoff. Still time for them to do something about it. Manchester City starting the day a point ahead of Liverpool. Well, City fans will be happy with the news they're getting from Anfield so far. We've got commentary on Manchester City against Tottenham uh, to come. Liverpool 2, Fulham 3. Endo, Japanese international, getting ready to come on for Liverpool. Volleyed forward by Kearney. Cleared by Canate for Liverpool. Ball drops inside the Fulham half. Deckard over Reed. On the turn, his pass forward intercepted. And there's Alexander-Arnold for Liverpool. Strokes a pass to his right. And here's Joe Gomez. Gomez wants an option. That option is Gakpo. Gakpo moves away from Anthony Robinson. Robinson backs off wide on the right. Forward to Salah. Salah, one touch. Surrounded by three white shirts edge of the box Gomez comes in to help out back to Alexander Arnold good cross towards the far post just beyond Nunez and goes behind for the goal kick to Fulham Stephen Warner he just didn't anticipate the ball coming in did he Darwin Nunez one little touch from Trent Alexander Arnold sets himself to get that ball into the back post he just doesn't read it at all so Ryan Gravenberg comes off Wataru Endo comes on for Liverpool Liverpool 2, Fulham 3. Liverpool led twice. The stunning Alexander-Arnold free kick. That was cancelled out by Harry Wilson's goal. Then McAllister with an unbelievable hit from about 30 yards out that went whistling into the top corner to put Liverpool 2-1 in front. Kenny Tete with the second equaliser for Fulham initially ruled out offside, but the VAR checked and Tete was clearly onside and now... Decadova reads header at the far post has Fulham ahead in this game Liverpool have the ball inside their own penalty area it's played back to Kelleher Kelleher comes across to Van Dijk seven minutes plus added time remaining and Liverpool fans around us urging their team forward Van Dijk strides up to the halfway line Endo on the turn finds Alexander-Arnold looking to thread it through the mass ranks of the Fulham defenders finds Gakpo Gakpo wide to Gomez Gomez stands the high cross up towards the far post Simicast nods it down Alexander-Arnold hits the shot couple of deflections another strike comes in huge deflection from Endo on the edge of the box and it goes behind for a corner yeah good defending again from Fully. Fulham bodies on the line making sure that they're committed to the cause. Another corner from Liverpool. Can they capitalise? One of those classic ones where the cop are going to try and suck the ball into the back of the net. Alexander Arnold plonks the ball down on the edge of the quadrant. Pretty much all the red shirts inside the penalty area. Curling ball in, headed down, saved by Leno. Salah's volleyed it over. Tight angle, close range. Hit it very, very sweetly with real power, but has launched it into the cop. Well, you just thought the net was going to rustle, didn't you? You just thought it was just going to end up in the back of the goal from Mohamed Salah. So unlike him, but great header from Endo. Good save by Bent Leno. And Salah just pushes it past the post. Should do better. Perhaps comes at him a little bit quick, but he's better than that. Yeah. Should score. Seen him score plenty of those before. Absolutely Johnny on the spot there. Caught it well, but couldn't. Guided underneath the crossbar, looking for that 200th goal for Liverpool maybe today is not going to be the day you can sense the concern around Anfield Manchester City still have their Premier League game to play this weekend it's coming here for you on five live and BBC sounds Fulham leading Liverpool by three goals to two what a performance it's been 
from Marco Silva and his team. Here's William on the left-hand side. Kenny makes a great run for him into a little pocket of space, plays it back to William. William rolls a pass back to Anthony Robinson, who's been one of the real stars of this performance. Kenny and William have really added something since coming on. Yeah, they have, and Dico David Reed as well. They've, they've added pace and sort of a threat going forward and that real energy in the legs to, to get beyond Liverpool's midfield and that's caused them big, big problems. Win for Fulham will take them on to 18 points. So that would be up into uh, 12th spot above Crystal Palace. Chelsea are on the move up the table as well because they're leading Brighton by three goals to one despite the sending off of Conor Gallagher uh, in that game today. Could be an important win for Bournemouth coming as well. They lead Villa by two goals to one. Closing stages of all those games. Gakpo on the turn for Liverpool. On the attack, down the right. Gomez cross, good ball, but just a little too close to Leno, who falls on it gratefully in the six-yard box. Now I'll hear people behind me saying it's a poor ball. It's not a poor ball whatsoever. You've got to get across the front post. You've got to make sure that you see that pass because that's a really good ball from Joe Gomez. Uh, full time at the London Stadium, John Hunt. Honours even here, it's finished West Ham 1, Crystal Palace 1. Kudas in the first half for West Ham. Odson Edward equalised for Crystal Palace after a horrendous mistake by Mavropanos, gifting him the chance. Jared Bowen, two minutes from time with a header, straight at the keeper, the closest West Ham got to a winner. West Ham 1, Crystal Palace 1. Four minutes remaining at Anfield. Liverpool 2, Fulham 3. Nod down from Nunez to Salah. Salah trying to control this ball. Lays it off to the back of the area. Endo! Oh! Afternoon. What do Fulham have to do to win this game? Endo off the bench, first time right footed. Leno didn't stand a chance. What a game we've witnessed. Liverpool 3, Fulham 3. Well, it's a lovely ball from Canate into the path of Darwin Nunez. And Nunez finally has the awareness, the composure to find his teammate. Finds Mohamed Salah in the box. Salah, unselfish, sets it on a plate for Endo, but take nothing away from the finish. Edge of the box, bends it into the far right corner. Again, Leno absolutely helpless. Nothing he can do about all three of the Liverpool goals. Uh, late goal at Stamford Bridge, John Southall. Not over yet. Chelsea three, Brighton two. Corner from the left hand side. Flick header from Pedro in the bottom corner. We've got eight minutes added on still to play. Chelsea three, Brighton two. Uh, plenty of drama still to come this afternoon. More at Bournemouth, Aaron Paul. Bournemouth two, Aston Villa two. Guess who? It's Oli Watkins. He's had a quiet game, but what a ball this is from Diaby off the right. And Watkins with a glanced header past Neto. Villa have equalised to the death. Bournemouth two, Aston Villa two. Nunez cross, nearly finds Simicast. Brought down by Alexander Rodol. Oh! Who scores for Liverpool? He rifles the ball. Trent Alexander-Arnold, he's mobbed by his joyous teammates and Liverpool now lead Fulham by four goals to three. Well, Fulham aren't happy on the bench, they think there's a foul at the back post as the ball comes in, they feel that there's a push on Castagna as it falls into the path of Trent Alexander-Arnold, he just sets himself, he pulls the trigger, bottom corner, right foot, again Leno, he doesn't get anywhere near it, and wow, what a couple of minutes for Liverpool, you have to feel for Fulham though, they have given everything in this game. Trent Alexander-Arnold again, stands in front of the cop, makes the symbol of the capital A with his fingers, then puts a little shush sign to his lips, and actually that's going to go down as his first goal of the game, Stephen. I've just discovered, rather disappointingly, the free kick is a Leno own goal. It's come down off the bar, hit Leno, and ended up in the back of the net. But, wow, what a striker of a ball Trent Alexander-Arnold is. He had defenders rushing at him there, controlled it on his right thigh, and has buried it in the bottom corner. But as you say, Stephen, there will be complaints from Marco Silva and Fulham. Carlos Vinicius is waiting to come on Talking about this title race this season, you know, who knows which way it's going to pan out, but this couple of minutes at Anfield tonight feels really, really crucial at the moment. Yeah, it will do, absolutely. Liverpool on the attack again, got nice. the tails up. They really do, Alexander-Arnold thundering his way down the left-hand side, eventually the ball's run out of play and gone out for a throw into Fulham. So, Ollie Watkins' 90th-minute equaliser makes it Bournemouth 2, Fulham 2.
Chelsea 3, Brighton 2 is still ongoing. Lots of added time there. João Pedro scoring in the 92nd minute to put that game in the balance against 10 man Chelsea. And now it's Liverpool 4, Fulham 3. Harrison Reed replaced by Carlos Vinicius. Poor old Fulham, you have to say. Behind twice, eventually got ahead 3 2. Robinson's fouled by Gakpo, who thought he won the ball cleanly and was about to cross it into the penalty area. And it looks now like Liverpool are going to go on and make it 11 wins out of 11. They've been gifted the ball to Gakpo. Tees up Salah. Salah, a whole white wall in front of him. Just didn't know which way to turn and he was tackled. And Bassi brings the ball away for Fulham. William, his pass forward intercepted. Strong challenge from Robinson on Gakpo. Gakpo thought he should have had a free kick. Throws himself around on the floor in frustration. And Robinson is able to clear the ball uh, for Fulham. Added time there. Now at Anfield, I didn't see the board go up. Don't really want this game to end. Liverpool 4, Fulham 3, and we've still got Manchester City Seven Tottenham. minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes of added time remaining at Anfield. What about this one? Four. I'm happy with that, are you? Oh, I'm very happy with that, Stephen. 4-3 <laughs> Liverpool. Uh, Fulham trying to get it forward quickly. Gomez intercepts. And Gakpo just plays it to Gomez, and now everyone... Just calming down a little in the red shirts out on the field. Certainly not the fans inside the stadium. That was bedlam when Alexander-Arnold got the fall. Oh, it was absolutely crazy, wasn't it? I don't think we saw it coming because Fulham have been so organised in the way that they played, but those two goals have just turned this game on its head completely. Ball nearly breaks to Gomez on the right-hand side. A little bit of a rash challenge through the back of Willian. Given as a free kick eventually by the assistant referee and doesn't get the agreement of the thousands of Liverpool fans who are massed in this massive giant main stand and the Christmas lights still twinkling in front of our commentary position and so much Christmas football for you to come here on Five Live uh, this one of 36 Premier League commentaries we have for you in December across Five Live Sports Extra, the BBC Sport website and app uh, throw in given to Fulham Jurgen Klopp now can't believe it and was just about to scream that disbelief into the ear of the assistant referee and then quite wisely thought better uh, about it throw in taken by Fulham Williams flick on Alexander Arnold is there to hoist the clearance away Bassi heads it forward Gomez clears on the left foot volley Tim Ream powerful header from him into the Liverpool half Canate chests it down and then Canate's long ball up towards Nunez, trying to head it back to Gakpo. This one might reach Nunez now. Ream intercepts, but Gakpo now does win a free kick as he was challenged for the ball. He was knocked to the floor, and Liverpool get the decision. Full time in the FA Cup second round. Chesterfield, Leighton Orient. Chris Coles. Chesterfield are through the non-league side, beating League One Leighton Orient by an own goal to nil. Ollie Bank shot deflecting off Brandon Cooper in the first half. Orient barely threatened. And it's Chesterfield who now face a trip to Watford in round three. Chesterfield won, Leighton Orient nil. Eastley uh, of the National League also through to the FA Cup third round today. Liverpool four, Fulham three. Bobby Deco Dover Reed running the ball down the right hand touchline uh, has run out of space and Liverpool have won it back off him. Seven minutes of added time being played here. Liverpool uh, have played the ball out of play, throw in for Fulham. They're going to take that quickly into the feet of Paulinia. Darwin Nunez comes hurtling in to try and make a tackle doesn't get there Tim Ream has the ball at his feet and Fulham players being booed as they try and bring the ball out of their own half Bassey plays to the right and here's Kearney Kearney comes back to Ream Ream across to Bassey Liverpool holding Fulham at arm's length here inside their own half Kearney gets his head up and sees if he can find a forward pass instead he has to curl the ball across the halfway line to Tim Ream Ream low to his left to William William plays back to Robinson Fulham desperately trying to find a goal to try and salvage something from this incredible game of football at Anfield. Bassi down the inside right channel, laid off by Kearney. Castagna, side foots a measured pass down the right to Deckard over Reed. He's tackled, Liverpool win the throw. Full time at Bournemouth, Aaron Paul. Bournemouth to Aston Villa, two goals from Semenyo and Solanke saw the home side lead twice. Bailey and Watkins provided the equalisers for Villa who nick a point here. Bournemouth two, Aston Villa two. Uh, in terms of the FA Cup, Wrexham Yeovil will be underway, is underway. Commentary will be on Sports Extra shortly following the uh, 
completion of the Chelsea Brighton game. Still Chelsea three, Brighton two, and Wrexham lead Yeovil by a goal to nil in the early stages. Oli Palmer has scored for Wrexham. Salah's ball over the top might run for Nunez. Bassi deals with it for Fulham. Nunez comes sliding in, and the ball comes off him and goes out for a Fulham throw. They take it quickly. Here's João Polinia. João Polinia has overrun that challenge on him by Endo. Wins it for Liverpool. Diaz forward to Salah. Liverpool could really kill it here. Salah plays it to his right. Not enough on it to find Gap. And Anthony Robinson, of course, who else, gets the foot in for Fulham. Canate intercepts and the ball goes out for a Fulham throw. Steven. Yeah, a big pump of the chest there from Jurgen Klopp in front of Canate, winning the ball back. It's just been breathtaking, this game of football. I still think there's something in it for one of the teams. <laughs> Well, not long left to find that. There's a ball forward towards the edge of the Liverpool penalty area. Canate is able to get that for Liverpool. Plays to Van Dijk. His clearance takes a slight deflection as it goes forward. Robinson miscontrols and the ball goes out for a Liverpool throw uh, on the right. So Wrexham Yeovil in full-on sports extra after the end of Chelsea Brighton. Chelsea leading Brighton by three goals to two. It's finished Bournemouth two, Villa two, West Ham one, Palace one and we've still got Manchester City Tottenham to come and there's still two wine gums left in the bottom of that packet as well come full time saving them for you oh that's very kind of you Stephen uh, here's Darwin Nuni it's not quite been his afternoon he's lost the ball here but he's been fouled by Joao Palinia and Fulham think everything is against them I mean it's going to be no consolation Stephen Fulham have been excellent here oh today, they have they? they really have I mean you think of three of the goals that Liverpool have scored have been outstanding goals and real quality moments and then the final goal could happen at any point but they've been dangerous they've caused Liverpool problems the substitutions have been good they've had an impact I mean there's been a lot of talk about Fulham being in trouble this season I don't see it on the evidence of this performance no I couldn't agree more here's Alexander Arnold with the free kick and now Liverpool trying to run this game down bring it to a close make it seven wins out of seven at Anfield in the Premier League they lead Fulham by four goals to three 6.06 will be good to chat this game tonight with Chris and Robbie. That'll follow our commentary of Manchester City against Tottenham. Kelleher under pressure inside his own half. Clears as Jimenez closes in. Robinson heads the ball up in the air. Only as far as Gakpo chests it down. Feeds Salah. Salah's got Ream right behind him. Gakpo takes it off Salah. Looking for the run of Nunez. Bassi clears almost into the feet of Salah as he was running into the penalty area. That's it. Liverpool win a seven-goal thriller at Anfield. Trent Alexander-Arnold sending the cop wild with the late winner. Two goals in two minutes at that time late in the game because Liverpool at that point trailed by three goals to two. But the crucial moment came late. Trent Alexander-Arnold with his right foot drilling it into the bottom corner.